and uh, it is very important uh, your presence but also uh, the sharing uh, of your uh, experiences uh, so um, we will start the second day uh, and the first uh, keynote uh, will be Mrs. Kana Furusawa. Uh, she is a member of the Japanese uh, Geoparks Network, uh, is also a member of the Asia Pacific uh, Geoparks Network Advisor Committee and uh, she is member of the Global Geoparks Network Executive Board. Uh, so she has a, a large knowledge about uh, geoparks and uh, we ask her uh, to share uh, with us uh, her, her ex experience uh, about the reality of the coastal and insular Japanese uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks. As you know, Japan uh, as a very um, specific geographic uh, and geological uh, conditions. And uh, in many aspects, it's uh, probably uh, one of the best examples in the world uh, regarding um, the, the technology, regarding the knowledge uh, related um, with um, <laughs> the relationship in between people and the ocean. Uh, and uh, for sure that uh, Skana, uh, Miss Kana Furusawa uh, could be uh, the, probably the best person to explain us uh, this relationship in between uh, the Japanese UNESCO Global Geoparks and the ocean. Thank you, thank you so much uh, Kana for accepting uh, our invitation. Uh, is, uh, your presence honored us and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening to all the colleagues. Oh, can I share my screen? Yes, please. Can you see? Yes, we are seeing. Yes. It's only to enlarge the presentation. Yes, I'm trying now, but it's it's not oh okay so can you see okay, it now it's, it's perfect it's perfect okay good thank good. you thank you so thank you very much for inviting me today and i'm kana furusawa uh vice secretary general of the japanese geoparks network jgn since 2017 and before that i lived in muroto unesco global geopark and worked there as a coordinator there and now I'm still working with the Muroto team as a special advisor. Uh, in Japan, uh, can you see my screen? In this moment, only a black screen with some uh, Japanese characters on the top. Oh. oh, I'm sorry, it's not working. Hmm, I don't know what's wrong. Look, if it no, is... No, no, Okay, okay. So it was the last slide. Sorry. So I start from the beginning. Okay. Now it's sorry. perfect. Okay, thank you. So in Japan, we have nine UNESCO Global Geoparks and 37 national geoparks and also 10 more regions are uh, aspiring to become national geoparks as well and uh, they are all members of our network japanese geoparks network and this is very very brief history of geopark activities in japan especially at the beginning uh, we started geopark activities after the Global Geopark Network, G, uh, GGN, was established in 20, uh, 2004. And in 2007, Japanese Geoparks Liaison Council was established. Uh, some mayors and staff of municipalities and some geologists gathered in Tokyo 
and officially started geopark activities in Japan. And in 2009, the Japanese Geoparks Network, JGN, was established. The Japanese Geoparks Network is a non-profit organization, and the president of the JGN was the mayor of Itoigawa City, Mr. Toru Yoneda, for more than 13 or 14 years since the beginning. Uh, however, at the end of May this year, uh, Mr. Toru Yoneda uh, retired from the president and became our advisor. And he is uh, still very healthy and active, but uh, he decided to hand this uh, to the next generation, to uh, Mr. Ryuzaburo Furukawa. He is our new president. And he used to be our vice president for more than five years already. And he is uh, from Unzen Volcanic Area, UNESCO Global Geopark, and also the mayor of Shimabara City. Uh, our new um, president is now uh, very active and we are looking forward to work with him actively as well as uh, we used to do it with uh, Mr. Yoneda. Uh, we have executive board members for two years term and this year we have 12 members and the election of the president and vice presidents take place in every two years. We have the JGN office in Tokyo the Secretary General of the JGN is still Mr. Seiichi Saito. He is uh, dispatched from Itoigawa City for more than 10 years and still working in Tokyo with us. And we have five staff totally in our office, including myself. And the main fund of the JGN is annual fee from our members. All the uh, geoparks in Japan are regular members and they pay uh, 400,000 yen each. It's roughly about 4,000 US dollars. And we have working groups and operational meetings as well. It is not necessary to have a national geopark or national geoparks network, but in our case in Japan, um, having this national Geoparks Network functioned very well uh, because we had some reasons, especially at the beginning. Uh, we had no direct support from national government. So local government, mainly city or town interested in Geoparks supported each other with limited resources. And we, um, we had uh, almost no one knew about Geoparks at the beginning in Japan. So we did the promotional activities, including creating new websites and leaflets together. And um, especially uh, in a small town, not many direct connection with scientists, especially earth scientists. So we have information exchange and collaboration with academic societies also. And we had to collect information and translate them because most of the geopark information was written not in Japanese, mostly in English. So um, in again, this also in small town, not many people can speak or understand English fluently. So uh, we tried to translate information into Japanese and share. Uh, even last year, for example, uh, this is the uh, um, YouTube uh, video found, uh, we found uh, last year, uh, Guy Martini sharing basic concept of UNESCO Global Geopark. And we were sure this is very useful for many of our colleagues or even uh, other um, general Japanese to understand deeper about uh, UNESCO Global Geopark. And we added Japanese subtitle. And we published Geopark magazine once, once every year. And uh, we also held uh, many events. The biggest events of all 
is JDN National Conference. Um, this year, uh, after uh, COVID era, uh, we couldn't have, we couldn't gather together like this, but uh, this year we are going to have a national uh, conference again in Hakusan Tedorigawa, aspiring UNESCO Global Geopark. And we will maybe gather again 800 to 1,000 people together. In the um, national, con uh, national conference, we have ceremony for new geoparks and we have mayor's panels and uh, we have students' poster sessions. And also we have local products um, gathered and uh, sold in many uh, opportunities. So um, even many students of elementary school or secondary school uh, come and uh, have their poster presentation or oral presentation. Professor Nikos Doros uh, gave a keynote speech at our ninth JGN National Conference in Mount Apo UNESCO Global Geopark in 2018. And at the same conference in Mount Apo UNESCO Global Geopark, the indigenous Ainu traditional dance and performance welcomed us at the opening ceremony. So as I said, we have nine UNESCO Global Geoparks and eight of them are coastal or insular geoparks. So we have many ocean related activities in our uh, Japanese UNESCO Global Geopark. In Muroto UNESCO Global Geopark, uh, there are sustainable fishery. Uh, we have fixed net fishery, a local traditional industry was established in um, Muroto in 18th century, according to the historical record. The eastern part of Muroto Peninsula has a very unique underwater topography. Only two to three kilometers away from the land, and uh, it suddenly falls to deep into 700 to 1,000 meters. Therefore, a uh, very steep cliff has formed in the ocean. And thanks to this um, underwater topography, nutrient rich deep sea water upwells to the surface and provides a rich fishing ground very close to the land. A large fixed net approximately 500 meters long and 90 meters wide is set on the ocean near the land. And the whole of the net, I mean, the mesh, mesh is very wide. So it avo avoids to catch small fish or young fish. Only big fishes are caught by this net. So this is very uh, sustainable way of fishing, and it, it is still implemented in Muroto. A young fisherman started Geopark cruise tour in 2018 by using his own uh, fishing boat. He takes passengers to the area where the fixed net are set and explains how local people utilize the local new, uh, natural environment for the sustainable management of the fishery. It also works to conserve Muroto's rich marine ecosystem and biodiversity. During his cruise, participants sometimes meet and observe sea creatures and, and then afterwards they release them to the ocean again. Uh, this is uh, from Hokkaido Toya Usu UNESCO Global Geopark. They published this um, water's journey, considering the water environment from the perspective of UNESCO Global Geopark's practices. Uh, this publication raises awareness about water circulation on the example of the UNESCO Global Geopark. 
another UNESCO Global Geopark that is the only one uh, inland geopark among nine UNESCO Global Geoparks in Japan. That is ASO UNESCO Global Geopark is also focusing on the water circulation and also works on the ocean litter because we have some data that shows 70% of the litters found in the coastal area are from inland. Koya Usu UNESCO Global Geopark is also working on other water related projects. Um, one of this is a um, Japanese towel called Tenugui, decorated with illustrations of various living creatures living in the water environment. And they uh, show how this links to our lives. And another example is a lake combing event. And they make their own treasure box with plastic and glass found on the lake shore. And they added another uh, exhibition corner in their uh, facilities uh, focusing on water environment. Uh, this is from uh, Itoigawa UNESCO Global Geopark. And um, they had sea application project 2022 in this summer. They aim to join the celebration of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science and to help reconnect local people with the sea and better understand the issues uh, we are all facing. So Marine Litter Art Workshop and Sea Art Exhibition at Costa Magna Museum is one of these projects. Uh, the special exhibit uh, features not only artwork made from plastic litter found along Itorigo's coast, but also panels um, uh, about the various environment issues facing our shared oceans. And uh, one of the panel they made from the plastic liters uh, are the logo of the SDGs. In many coastal or insular geoparks, we have many beach cleaning activities because even soon after their cleanup activities, we have another litters coming in to from ocean with typhoon or big waves like this. And this is from Muroto again, that they do many uh, cleanup activities. And during the break, they have some lectures by geoscientists about the, the site they clean up. 2021 marked the start of the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development and the Japanese Geoparks Network has started activities in accordance with it, including a kickoff event held in Oki UNESCO Global Geopark in November last year, 2021. During the event, a declaration of JGN initiative for the United Nations Decade of Ocean Science for Sustainable Development was made jointly by local high school students and the president of the JGN. Uh, we have this declaration on our website. In August 2020, loggerhead sea turtle was found um, injured in Oki UNESCO Global Geopark, Oki Islands UNESCO Global Geopark. Um, this um, sea turtle was um, fortunately um, uh, survived, could survive and now brought back to health in an aquarium in Japan. And the storybook was made from this um, turtle story and published this year. GGN newly published this uh, publication on the occasion of the World Oceans Day. You can read articles from nine UNESCO Global Geoparks in Japan as well in this publication. 
Thank you very much for listening. Oh, thank you so much for your nice and great uh, presentation. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, we have time for uh, uh, one question to Ms. Kanafur Sawa. Did someone uh, have a question? For, for sure, she uh, is. <laughs> Uh, she wants to, to answer to your questions. Uh, what's really impressive, uh, what you show about the activities developed um, by the management structures uh, towards, for example, to, to clean uh, the coastal areas and the, the, especially the beaches. But, um, it's, it's, it's something that uh, is, uh, involves not only students, but also the community. We saw even um, people that for sure are already retired involved uh, in this. Uh, and uh, uh, for you, this is, this is normal. Uh, so it's something that you consider in uh, in all or, or, all your uh, activities uh, when uh, in the in the management plan uh, and also in the educational programs. Can you? Uh, so your question is. Uh, if, yes, if, 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 if for, for you this is already something that uh, uh, it's natural for you. It's not something special or made uh, um, on, on purpose, but uh, uh, it's, it's something already cultural. Uh, so you, uh, to, to clean the ocean, to, to have these, uh, um, to, uh, these kind of be behavior, to, uh, to take care of the ocean, mm -hmm. uh, for you is something that is, is cultural, or you also need to create uh, uh, this from the base? Yes, we, we also needed to create new activities, mm -hmm. but it was good that um, many areas, many regions started geopark activities throughout Japan. And through geopark activities, we have more uh, um, awareness raising and also having this kind of activities throughout the society, including young generation and uh, senior generation as well. Great. Uh, we have here um, that Miguel Reis Silva from Portugal. Uh, he said that uh, we share almost the same problems in the aspiring uh, West uh, Geopark is uh, uh, in the Atlantic coast, uh, northwards from Lisbon. Um, they face some, uh, it's very good for them that they are now an aspiring geopark to, to see your, uh, your example. Um, it's, a, it, it's very good. And uh, uh, also uh, Tarek Ben Frey from Tunisia, uh, he thanks you and uh, he asks, would you please share some of articles you mentioned? It? Okay. Okay, so yeah. if, if, if it is possible after, after uh, on, on the chat, you can share, for yeah, example, yeah. the links I from so, some articles. I so, Kenna, thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Thank you for the accept acceptation of our invitation. It was an honor to have you in this intensive course. And now uh, it is time uh, to um, Professor John Young Moon. Um, I don't know if he, he is present uh, as far as I, I try to find his presence uh, not. Uh, he is not. In this case, uh, we have um, about 10 minutes that are uh, as I promised yesterday at the end of the, the session, uh, we will uh, allow to uh, Miss Ait Yakub Fatia from the yes. project Geopark Jebel Bani from Morocco, yes. the opportunity 
to to show with us uh, the state of the heart of your uh, project and uh, th thank you for uh, to, to be you. prepared to, thank you to for share you. with us so miss aitia kufatia you have the floor uh, good morning everyone i wish you are uh, all fine thank you for this uh, opportunity uh, i will share you uh, uh, today a uh, presentation about our geopark Jibigani, uh, situated in Morocco. And I will share a presentation now. Yes, please. It's all, all, only too enlarged. It's, uh, it's cleared. Yeah, it's it's visible. Uh, you are sharing your uh, yes. your presentation. It's visible. It's yeah, visible? It, yes, it's visible. Done. So uh, the, our uh, our geopark is named Sustainable Territory of Geopark Bilbeni. I would like to present our geopark situated in Morocco, covering three regions in Morocco. So what's uh, territory sustainable geopark Jibigani? Sustainable territory of geopark Jibigani is an original territory, which I said, which I said that covers three regions. Uh, it's uh, managed by the association uh, in DGB. It's in French, association, a Moroccan association of development of geopark Jibigani. Uh, this pilot project aims to implement 200 innovative projects spread over the theory contribution to the restoration of ecologic ecosystems having a transformative and reforming effect on the environment, soil, water, air. Uh, with his horizon, horizontal intervention in order to put population and local communities with local elected and civil servants to promote our real attractions and activity. Uh, it means that we, 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 we allow the, the population, the community, the local uh, communities to, uh, to be in relation with uh, elected, uh, local elected, and population uh, ha have an opportunity to express in their self in a frame way in new form uh, of development. Uh, it goes beyond the geology aspect, including the human and cultural aspect with tangible and intangible heritage. Object the goals of the territorial sustainable geopark Jibigani is valorization of a tangible and intangible resources, coordinator between three P's, uh, it means public actors, private actors, local population, uh, local communities in engaging local population in uh, the approach bottom up and, uh, and uh, arrive to the sustainable local development, creating employment of young people and the women. Our network, our networking uh, are CAC uh, GGP, Confederation of Association and Cooperative of Geopark Jibigani, LDTL GGP uh, with uh, a tourist accommodation establishment shift on uh, digitalized tourist circuit, and more than 250 uh, heritage sites. And with uh, technology, uh, uh, with our networks, 100 and uh, 120 mi uh, million subscribers, more than 250 members. And uh, we wish uh, uh, you all visit us. Uh, this is our situs and uh, uh, we, uh, uh, our uh, our networking, our social networking, and our localization. This uh, this this association it uh, he did he did with uh, Vice Sir Patrick Simon. Uh, uh, 
He's, uh, he's in uh, French and uh, it's present, president of the association. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, each, uh, I yeah, wish uh, you are <laughs> you under, uh, understanding well, my. Uh, what was very nice, and it is very important. We have with us. Uh, it will be one of the, the keynote speakers of this this morning, um, Mr. Dries Ashwal. Uh, he is the from Morocco, and he is the 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 president of the. African uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks uh, Network, and for sure this is, it, it, this, is, uh, this is a very good news uh, for him and for the entire Geoparks community, because uh, we are looking for uh, the development uh, of new um, Geoparks projects in African countries. And yes. um, Morocco have already won UNESCO Global Geopark, Mgum, that uh, Ms. Dries Ashbal uh, is, uh, <clears throat> is the president of the Mgum Geopark uh, Association. Uh, and uh, uh, yes, it, it is important to, to, to see and even to, to share our experience and our help uh, with uh, those projects that are under development, this this moment uh, are developing in African countries. So, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, thank you to, so much for to, this opportunity for, for sharing uh, with us uh, this new project, uh, and for sure that all those that are participating in this course and uh, in in future, for example, don't don't forget that in November. Uh, it, it will be uh, it, it will be held in the in the Lesbos uh, Island UNESCO Global Geopark in Greece the intensive course on uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks is a an organization for, of of the Global Geoparks Network and the uh, together with the support uh, of UNESCO and it's something that is important to participate uh, and for sure for you and for all of those that are now developing projects it will be very important uh, to participate and it is mandatory to participate in this course previously to the application for a new uh, project so I don't know I don't know if uh, someone has questions to Ait Yaqub, uh, Yaqub Fatia, uh, if you have, so please, you have the floor. No, if no, it's, uh, thank you, thank you once thank you again uh, for you sharing with for us your, your project. And now it is time for uh, the, the next uh, uh, <clears throat> presentation. And uh, this presentation will be made by the engineer Emmanuel Deusilalai. Uh, he is from uh, Indonesia. Um, is uh, uh, a specialist in geothermalism, but uh, he is also the Global Geoparks Network EAUS Forum Chair. Um, it's uh, very important because uh, he is in charge and have the responsibility uh, to help to uh, widespread um, the, the mission, the vision, uh, and also the values uh, of the UNESCO Global Geoparks through the health people that lives uh, in the UNESCO Global Geoparks. And um, for sure that uh, he will have uh, special things to share with, the, uh, with us because he will talk about the vision of the young generations about the role of the oceans for the UNESCO Global uh, Geoparks. Thank you, thank you, uh, Emmanuel, uh, for uh, accepting uh, our uh, invitation. And now the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Arthur. Oh, uh, some. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello. 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 Uh, that, uh, for some reason, uh, the, the internet uh, 
<laughs> stay froze. Uh, but okay, let's try again. Can you see my screen? And you can you hear me? Yes. Now we are seeing your screen, and we are hear you. Hear you. Okay. Thank you very much, Arthur. So let me introduce myself. My name is. I come from Toba Caldera UNESCO Global Geopark from Indonesia. So my role now in the UNESCO Global Geopark Youth Forum is as chairperson or as the president. I was elected in Jeju Island in the December 2021. So I am working as a slumber J wireline field engineer right now, and I was an electrical engineering backer. So I have a V. Hello, Emmanuel. Global Geopark Sustainability. So let's talk about UNESCO Global Geopark in the world. Today, there are 177 existing UNESCO Global Geopark. And out of that 177, there are 30% of them that have oceanic part. We know the fact that the world is covered by water in 71%. And in the world, out of that 97%, is ocean. We are lucky in the UNESCO Global Geopark, the Marai in the UGGP guidelines. So if we go through specific in the UNESCO Global Geopark itself, for example, in the Swabian, Alp, in the Haute Province, French, in the Chiletu Palabon Ratu, Indonesia, in the Kishim Island, Iran, remain 50% of the UGGPs, they are all actively involved in the climate change adaptation. So, so I took from the World Ocean Day videos made by the GGN and the UNESCO. So what as a young person we can do related in his day video, promoting ocean related cultural heritage, involving population for sustainable use of marine resources, learning tourism, and last but not least, developing activities. I'd like to talk more about in We know in Located in Asia Pacific. Emmanuel. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello, Emmanuel. You are listening to me. Emmanuel. Before the world. Emmanuel, you are listening to me. Possible to listen you. Uh, the, the the internet is totally blocked, and we are not listening you. Yeah, yeah. Hello, in, hello. In this position, I, I hear you, I hear you. in this position, perfect. Hello, uh, Arthur. Yes, please. Hello, so, hello, Arthur. Yes, are you listening me? Hello. Yeah. Try, try, try to switch off your your video. Hello, Arthur. Can you hear me? Yes, Emmanuel. Uh, we hear you. So keep you without camera, uh, yes. and and try to make the presentation without camera in order to try to see if it is possible to follow follow you because we are not able to listen you. Okay. Okay. So now okay. it's possible. Now it's possible. So go go further. Okay, so I will continue from here. So yeah. we know um, all of the involved in the climate change mitigation. You can see the several 
uh, Joe Parks as in this presentation. And uh, the Global Jopa Network celebrates the World Ocean. They are mentioned the people can do promoting ocean related to the cultural heritage, involving population for sustainable use of marine resources, developing educational activities, learning seaside geology, and last but not least, developing educational activities related to the marine. So I would like to go through specifically about Indonesia. Indonesia is located in Asia Pacific. We are well known for the highest biodiversity in the world. Hello, Emmanuel. The largest ocean thermal energy. Yes, Arthur. Yeah, we have, we have some cuts, so let's try. Let's uh, let's follow. Yeah. Okay. So we are located in Indonesia. I am I'm from Indonesia, and we well known for this marine um, population. Green. We have six Indonesian UNESCO goals. The Batu, Gunung Sewu, Rinjani, Ciletu Palabuan Ratu, Toba Caldera, and Belitong. And most of the area consists of what, let's say, ocean, lake, right? This is the fact that we, for Belitong, 73% are covered by sea. For Natuna, we have National Geopark as well. Now is look is surrounded by ocean, 55%. That is located. It's very, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, I don't know if you, if you can. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello, Emmanuel. Hello, hello, Emmanuel. Uh, it's possible to, to to try to change your position. You know, hello, Emmanuel. Hello, Arthur. Hello, uh, hello, we, hello. We have a really high difficulties to listen to you because uh, the cats. Can are... you hear me? Yes, but in, in, in a moment you start to talk and the net, uh, the net uh, is, is, is froze. So um, how about how about how about now? Now uh, we are listening to you. So let's try again. So follow, please. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, as I told you that we have seen GP, Batur, Gunung Sewu, Injani, Ciletu, Toba, and Belitong. And I would like to tell you that um, we have also national geoparks that most of the area is covered by ocean, right? As you can see in the screen, right? Belitong, Nash Natuna, Maruspan, Ampat, and as well Kalabuan Ratu. So I'm the UNESCO Global forum i would like to tell to you what is this right so this is an official body that created by the ggn and the unesco the aim of them why they created this is to include well emmanuel <laughs> emmanuel hello emmanuel yes it's, it's very hard in fact to because uh, you start to talk and in the moment uh, we we only see the your uh, your presentation, but not listen you. Um, it's pro probably the place when you are. Um, hello, can you talk again? Yeah, Arthur. Yes, please. One. <laughs> you can hear me now. Yes, let's follow, please. Yes. Okay. So uh, I would like to present to you about UNESCO Global Geopark. So you can see in the screen, you can read it, that we are officially um, so collaborated in uh, December 2021. That's when we had the speech in Jeju Island. That's all the picture on the right side. These are all the delegates, official delegates that is chosen from each of the country. We have 41, right? This is the names. We come from Northern Europe, Western, Eastern, Asia, Southern Europe, Africa, South America, and Canada. And what we have done actually so far. So we have created this website. We call it Geopark Youth Hub. And we are now um, 
designing a UNESCO Global Job Park Seminar and Summer Camp. We have also international webinar on youth network engagement. This is a picture that I took from all of the activities of the youth forums in Portugal, in uh, Canada, and in Iran, and as well other places that they are doing um, a lot of uh, activities. We are also um, have this executive board monthly meeting. Um, I am as the representative that I talk um, about what youth can do related to the geopark. I would like to tell you a little bit story about what we are going to have in the September 13 to 17. We have the seminar and camp, which will be held in Batur in Bali. You, I, I believe all of you maybe have heard about Bali, right? It's one of the most famous places in Indonesia. So we will talk about tackling the climate change. The concept is easy. There are going to be a pre-summit tracks, summit groups, and summit output, where we are going to have this recommendation. We call it Batur Youth Charter on Climate Action that we can use as one of our um, proposal to tackle the climate change. This is also aligned with what the ocean, the World Ocean Day uh, as celebrated by the Geopark Network would have. So the Youth Action Plan for Ocean through UNESCO Global Geopark Youth Forum, we have to connect the maritime network and collaboration. We have to change the extractive to conservative lifestyle. We have to adopt environmentally friendly practices, educate and populate knowledge and experience build and reiterate marine product through economic wisdom and generate potential geomarine energy to electrical clean resources. And then with this UNESCO Global Geopark Youth Forum, the community shall gain the active projects with youth marine organization, recycle, reuse, reduce circular economy, practiceless, paperless digitalization, university, school and training projects, business case built to package, market and sell the geo products, and last but not least, research and company collaboration to pilot the energy project. Beyond the ocean, there were undoubtedly some positive development to come. So we need to focus our uh, 1.5 Celsius uh, reduced life by the UN and including nature and ocean recovery as well. We, I told you before, right, we are developing this website. So basically this website is a website that is useful to connect the youth globally for the geopark sustainability presented in the International Conference of Geoparks in Jeju Island 2021. We are collaborating with the Mariti Muda, is the uh, one of the non-profit organization that works a lot toward the marine environment. And we are supervised by the Ministry of Development Planning of Indonesia. You can later visit the website. I will tell you it through the chat. And then we have this uh, concept of Geopark Youth Hub uh, Network. We are following what Global Geopark Network are doing. We are creating some kind of network. It's still in a progress, which we can communicate easily through the uh, regional uh, network. Uh, we go further for Indonesia. We have already 21 regional Indonesia Geopark Forum. We are all spread all over the island Indonesia. The black one, that is for the UNESCO Global Geopark Forum. The blue one, that is for the National Geopark Forum. And the, the orange one is the Geopark that is still going to be a National Geopark. So to summarize, we are interconnected in Indonesia. We talk a lot about climate change. We talk a lot about how to develop an organization. We talk a lot about how we create an event and a lot of things related also to the ocean, which I told you on the previous slide. So we were kicked off on February, right, in 2021. You can see in the screen, we have the online, offline. Where I talked as well with the G. Martini, the Secretary General for the General Geopark Network. We are also declarating the IGYF on November 2021, have a lot of road trip and program initiation throughout the Geopark Youth Forum. And when we are chosen, Indonesian chosen as the President of the Global Job Park uh, Youth Forum, it's at the moment we are creating this website as well and the paper presentation. We are collaborating with the, uh, the government. We are also joining the G20 event. If you know that this G20 event is ongoing in Indonesia, basically that is a group to uh, elevate the economical perspective within 20 countries. 
and then there is a road trip and then we are doing a Joe Park goes to school as well and then last but not least we have this uh, festival celebration as well and what are we are doing right now for a sustainable program right i told you we have this summer camp and the seminar collaborating with the unesco global job park we have this uh, monthly meeting throughout the networks of indonesian job park forum we have job park youth edu camp which uh, we talk about climate change as well and then we have building capacity webinar international day celebration magazines social media videos and websites so last but not least my friend my fellow geoparkians i all you to come invite you to come to bali which we will have this um, seminar and camp for the youth please contact me for uh, any um, further information if you like to know about the event but for sure the vision of the youth for the young generation is coming from the youth itself and we know that we are in the era of digitalization we need and we have to do the digitalization through our knowledge through what we are doing right now because we have to to believe that joe parks is a multi-dimensional and multi-diverse concept that we can bring any knowledge any expertise to be developed in our territory and this is what we are called the network and collaboration internationally. Together, we are stronger. The spirit of the youth, thank you to have listened to my um, presentation. I invite you to come to Indonesia, the world's largest archipelago with 17,000 of islands. I invite you to come to Bali for the youth conferences. Thank you very much and have a good day. I give the floor to Arthur. If you have any questions please thank you very much thank you thank you emmanuel thank you despite some problems in the big in that part of your presentation i think that uh, all, all of we understood perfectly your message uh, and um, was really really very important and inspiring uh, for many of those that are uh, attending uh, this course uh, and they already know that uh, it's important also to work uh, this uh, connection uh, in between the health of the territories uh, in order to, um, to transform them uh, as the guardians uh, of the, the knowledge of the heritage for the uh, future uh, generations. Thank you so much for your presentation. And now, uh, if someone has questions to Emmanuel, Please uh, take uh, take the floor. Thank you, Emmanuel, for your excellent presentation. Oh, Gris uh, Ashfeld uh, from Morocco. Not, yes, not please. A not a question but I'm, I'm waiting emmanuel to work together to prepare the first uh, youth conference in gonjo park last year, next year in in azilal in the lake of bilwidan i'm waiting to work together with you uh, emmanuel congratulations thank you very much Mr. yes it, it will be very very important and the next year i remember that uh, um, Gum, uh, unesco global geo park in morocco will organize the uh, Global Geoparks Network Conference. And uh, all, all of you are already, and from now, uh, invited to participate also in this very, very important uh, event. Um, so, uh, Emmanuel, uh, we have only a uh, few minutes, but I, I think that please reinforce uh, the, uh, the, the importance to participate in the next uh, meeting uh in bali uh, of uh, the the youth forum of of the ggn because this uh, could be very important for many of those that are attending the course now yes arthur it will be hybrid so we can invite all of you to join through virtual and i'm will very happy if you can come physically you know we can have a travel in bali we can see batur the caldera and I believe it will be unforgettable experience. You can see our um, 
program is already raised in the website of Global Geopark Network. Thank you. Thank you, Emmanuel. And you already know that even they, they have a special uh, package and special prices for those that uh, want to attend uh, in person uh, in Bali, uh, because the Indonesian government are supporting strongly uh, these, uh, these events. So uh, if you want to attend in person, uh, for sure, you will be very welcome to this fantastic country that is uh, Indonesia, but also fr from uh, uh, webinar, uh, you can attend to, to this. So Emmanuel, once again, thank you so much for the acceptance of our uh, invitation uh, and for your participation. It was an honor to uh, have you with us. And now uh, it is time uh, to introduce the next uh, uh, keynote. Uh, it will be made by Miss Devona Lauritsen uh, from uh, the uh, Mount Apoi UNESCO Global Geopark uh, in the beautiful island of Hokkaido uh, in the north uh, of Japan. Um, I remember uh, a mission, a revalidation mission several, uh, several years ago uh, there and uh, the, how many beautiful things uh, they are doing there, uh, particularly in the uh, people from the Samani uh, municipality um, and uh, together uh, trying uh, to, uh, to work and to understand the importance uh, of the, the ocean. Uh, Ms. Devona Lauritsen is a specialist in education and also in research uh, in geoparks, uh, particularly uh, related with the coastal areas. And uh, she will uh, share uh, with us a uh, lecture uh, titled Economic Activities Related with Ocean and Beach Cleanup Activities. Thank you so much uh, for the acceptance of our invitation. It's a pleasure and a honor to have you uh, with us. So uh, please, the, the floor is yours. Great, thank you so much for inviting me here today to present. Can you see my screen okay? Yes, your screen is only need to enlarge. Yes, it's perfect now, yes. Okay, great. Thank you. So. My name is Devana Lauritsen, and I am a coordinator for international relations with the Mount Dupuy UNESCO Global Geopark in Hokkaido, Japan. Um, so first, I'd like to introduce my geopark a little bit here. Uh, Mount Dupuy is located on the northern island of Japan called Hokkaido, and it sits along the Pacific Island coast. Uh, we are a very small geopark, only 364 square kilometers, with a population of 4,050 people. The coastal waters of Mount Dupuy were, uh, have cold and warm ocean currents, creating a rich environment for ocean life like salmon, cod and octopus and kelp. And of course our town's main industries are fishing and kelp harvesting. Mount Dupuy from which the geopark gets its name towers over Samani and is composed of peridotite rock that originates from the upper mantle of the earth. The purity of the peridotite rock here is very rare and it's only found in a few places across the world. We have researchers that visit our geopark regularly to study the rock as it's thought to be a window into the Earth's mantle. Mount Apoi also derives its name from the indigenous Ainu people of Hokkaido who named it Apeoi Inupuri, which means mountain of fire. The Ainu would climb to the top of this mountain to light large bonfires in order to pray to their gods. And even though Mount Apoi is a relatively small mountain at only 110 meters high, it is home to rare alpine plant communities. In 1952, these alpine plants were designated as special natural monuments by the Japanese national government. So before getting into the beach cleanup activities, I was also asked to talk a little bit about our natural disasters um, as a coastal geopark and our mitigation measures. So due to global warming change, global climate change, our area is seeing more typhoons and experiencing damage from high waves. Um, on one hand, we have an abundance of seafood from the ocean, but there's also a harsh reality when living in tandem with the sea, as I'm sure many of you know. Uh, being in an earthquake prone part of the world, the largest threat to our area is tsunamis. Um, 
the previous inhabitants of our area, the indigenous Ainu, do not have a written language. So we don't have any written history of tsunamis that may have occurred while they were inhabiting this area. But we do have geological traces of large tsunamis that have hit our region. So here we have a list of tsunamis that have reached the area surrounding the geopark in recorded history. So we have in 1856, the Eastern Michinoku, which is a magnitude 7.7 .7 earthquake. Um, and then next was 1896, the San Rica earthquake, a magnitude 8.2. And there was at least a four meter tsunami that struck the neighboring town of Edimo. In 1933 was the Showa San Rica earthquake in 8.1. We had three tsunami waves, with the largest being 12 point or 14.2 meters that struck the town of Edimo. And they also erected this stone monument here that you see to the right. Um, I'm sure many of you may remember the March 2011 Great Eastern Japan earthquake and tsunami, which was a mega quake, a 9.0, um, created very large tsunami waves along the coast of mainland Japan. Here in Samani, we actually received uh, about four to five meter high tsunami waves. And you can see the pictures along the bottom of the screen. The first two are pictures of our main fishing port as the waves were receding before the tsunami hit. And the third one here is the day after the aftermath. Um, fortunately, in our town, there were no casualties or injuries, but the damage was estimated over 700 million Japanese yen. The damage included flooded homes, sunk fishing boats, damage to fish processing facilities. Um, and then the most recent one actually was a small tsunami wave after the uh, Hunga Tonga Hapai volcano in Tonga had uh, there uh, erupted in February 2022. And that actually happened here in the middle of the night. I remember we woke up, we had tsunami warnings going off on our phones and me and my family, we got up and we were getting ready to evacuate. Um, luckily that was only registered as a 70 centimeter wave in our neighboring town of Urakawa. But the municipal government of Samani has published tsunami hazard maps in 2013 um, in response to the great Eastern Japan earthquake and tsunami. These maps included a booklet that show how deep the Indonesian area uh, would be in the case of a 10 meter tsunami wave. Here is the map, oh, there we go. Here's the map for town central, um, also includes where I live in town. The red arrows indicate the evacuation routes that you can see um, leading up to higher ground or further inland. The green symbols here are the evacuation areas and they also list how high each evacuation area is. There are also easy to understand diagrams that show how high the water can go in case of a major tsunami event and helpful information on what to include in an evacuation bag. The town is currently updating this map and handbook to include information in case of a 20 meter tsunami. In the past year, the town held a few workshops with the locals to get a better idea of what information would be good to include in this handbook. I also participated in these workshops myself, and it was very interesting to hear some of the personal stories of people who were living here during the 2011 tsunami and their reactions and how they evacuated. Also in 2017, the national government's earthquake research committee estimated that there is a 70 to 40% chance of a tsunami generating magnitude nine earthquake occurring off the Pacific ocean coast of Hokkaido within the next 30 years. Major earthquakes have historically occurred in this area every 340 to 380 years, and it's been over 400 years since the last one. If this were to occur, a tsunami that it would generate could potentially kill up to a 199,000 people in the worst case scenario, especially if the earthquake occurred in the middle of the night or during winter. Winter here in Hokkaido is very cold, Daytime temperatures often stay below freezing, and most of the island gets very heavy snow. The committee re released these estimates as part of its disaster prevention efforts. They also said that the amount of casualties could be reduced by 80% if disaster measures are taken. So the Geopark and town administration are working together to raise awareness 
for earthquake and tsunami related disasters, as well as to ensure that the townspeople know where their nearest evacuation routes and areas are. Samani holds regular evacuation drills to ensure that everyone is familiar with these routes. And in fact, these are photos from a drill that was held just last year in October. Another more recent threat to our coastal area is the recent occurrence of a red tide event. So starting around September 2021, there were several news stories popping up about dead sea urchin and mollusks being washed ashore. There, have all, there were also stories on the news and newspapers about dead salmon being caught in nets along Hokkaido's Pacific coast. According to a article in the Hokkaido newspaper in September of 2021, the ocean water turned brownish red about mid-month, which is proof that a red tide event has occurred. On a separate Hokkaido newspaper article in October, the Edimo Fishing Cooperative, which includes half of Samani, lost 1,280 salmon and 10 tons of sea urchin. The Hidaka Central Fishing Cooperative lost um, 60 salmon as well. This red tide all around Hokkaido could be caused by a large amount of plankton from Western Japan or rising ocean temperatures, but we still don't know the cause. In October, 2021, we at the Geopark conducted a survey around an area called the Taisho Tunnel in Samani's Fuyushima area. And there were many bleached sea urchin shells, quite a few mollusk shells. Other things were we noticed were uh, mussels, roots of Hidaka kelp, and just lots of dead sea life all over the, all over the coast. This has already created a major loss of income for the fishermen in the area. And with our kelp harvesting season approaching, we will have to wait and see how the red tide has affected this year's kelp harvest as well. We even submitted an article about this for Gigian's latest publication, The Ocean, Geoparks and Oceans. And as you can see a photo here from our article, this was a picture taken from the seabed and it's just hundreds of uh, sea urchin shells. All right, so next we'll talk a little bit about the beach cleanup activities. In recent years, we have been come more concerned with items that are washing up on our shore. Due to the movement of waves and wind, we're seeing many domestic and international items washing up, especially we were seeing lots of trash coming up after storms happened in the area. Beginning last year, the Mount Apoi Geopark initiated a coastal cleanup project. We were working on other projects to increase awareness of how the ocean, which is right at our doorstep, is connected to the rest of the world and to the future. This project was sponsored by the Mount Apoi Geopark Promotion Council and other regional organizations such as women's groups, youth groups, and local banks volunteered to help. Many were quoted as saying that they're always coming to Samani, they're always climbing Mount Apoi, and they want to contribute to the area in some way. Some of our volunteers even traveled over 100 kilometers to participate. These events are advertised mostly via flyers like the one you see here. Um, they're posted around town, inserted in local newspapers. We also promote these activities on our website and Facebook pages. Here are some photos of our events. Our volunteers picked up plastic bottles, bags, and all kinds of trash along the beach. In July 2021, we had 55 volunteers gather and they collected 1,100 kilograms of trash. In November 2021, we had 40 volunteers collect 750 kilograms. And in May 2022, we had 40 volunteers pick up 520 kilograms in just one hour. So in the past three events, we removed over 2,370 kil kilograms of trash from our coastline. But yet, there is still so much to do. Afterwards, after the event had ended, um, our volunteers were shown some of the more unusual items of trash that they had found. Some of the items were mixed in with fishy buoys, plastic bottles from overseas. Uh, the volunteers realized once again that our coast connects us to the rest of the world. Uh, for example, some of the things that we found were packages of Korean eye medicine, Russian hand cream, Chinese water bottles. 
um, the trash that we collect through these projects gets picked up by a local trash processing facility at no cost, which has been really, really helpful. However, uh, for things like driftwood, that has to be disposed of by a special operator, which is a source of a concern because it can be very costly. And many of our volunteers were, uh, said things to us such as, our own lives will suffer if we don't clean up the ocean, or we need to pick up trash properly so it doesn't wind up somewhere overseas. And a few even said things like, we should do our best not to create trash in the first place. So here at Mount Poi, we live together with the ocean and it's the same for those who will live here in the future. What we're doing now may not make a large impact, but we will continue to do what we can one action at a time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Davona Lorison, for your uh, great and inspiring uh, presentation. Uh, something that uh, many of those that are uh, attending uh, this intensive course for sure uh, took uh, many many ideas and uh, in, in a certain way could uh, uh, saw themselves uh, in di distinct uh, geographic uh, locations to uh, to do something uh, similar and it was very important uh, to sharing with us uh, your experiences regarding the natural hazards, uh, especially uh, the, the tsunamis. Uh, I remember that uh, when I, I was there, the, the, you are already recovering from the consequences of the Fukushima uh, earthquake uh, and the, the tsunami that uh, achieved uh, the coast in, in Samani that destroyed the, even the, the firemen headquarters. Uh, yes. And, um, uh, but it was impressive that uh, despite to living with this, we have, uh, you have already an impressive uh, dynamic for resilience uh, to this. And very interesting uh, this uh, work carried on uh, with the, the local community in order to clean up uh, the, sh the shoreline and the, uh, to, uh, to uh, not only inspire them, but uh, put them aware about the impacts okay. uh, of, of the, if, if we have not, if we not respect uh, the natural environment, especially the, the ocean that have uh, many consequences for the main economic uh, business uh, of the region that is related with the, the fisheries. So uh, thank you, thank you so much for your great uh, presentation. And now it's uh, time to open the floor uh, for questions of the participants. If uh, someone want to uh, put uh, questions to uh, Ms. Devona Lauritsen, please take the floor. Oh, uh, we have a, a question from uh, Ms. Enas Hamed from Egypt. Uh, she said, important step to clean our water, very inspiring. Did you use nets to collect or just manual? All by hand. All by hand. So uh, <laughs> it's a, a, a one person uh, job uh, that in effect take. Uh, yes. Okay, yes, okay. Let's see if we have some. Uh, you have a lot of people thanking you and uh, uh, greeting you for uh, for your presentation, uh, and uh, well, um, no no more uh, no more questions. So th thank you once again, and please give my best wishes to the, all, the entire team, the entire staff of the. <laughs> Mount Apoi, uh, UNESCO, Global Geopark. Yesterday, it's important to talk about this because yesterday we talked uh, about the source uh, archipelago in the middle uh, Atlantic uh, rift with the island in the, uh, two islands in the North American plate, three in the Euro Asian plate and the four in the Af African uh, plate. Mm -hmm. And the, in effect, we, if we prolongate these and cross the North Pole, uh, we uh, found uh, Mount Apoi under the Japan uh, trench. Uh, that, in effect, this is a kind. Of, it's easy to understand uh, the the dynamic uh, of the the planet Earth 
uh, and also the, the conservation of the geoid uh, dimensions. Uh, it's very, very nice. And, uh, the, and even the periodotites uh, that are very famous uh, in Montapoi can just justify many of these uh, dynamic of the planet Earth and to understand the opening and the closing of the of the oceans and to understand the dynamic of the planet. Thank you. Thank you once again for your yeah, presence. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now it's time for the keynote speaker of, of this um, afternoon. Uh, it will be uh, presented by Mr. Dries Achwal. Uh, he is the president of the Megum uh, UNESCO Global Geopark uh, Association uh, in uh, Morocco. He's also president of the Association for the Protection of Geological Heritage in Morocco. He is member of the uh, Global uh, Geoparks Network Executive Board uh, and uh, is the president of the African UNESCO Global Geoparks Network. Despite this, he is a researcher uh, on socioeconomic development and valorization of the natural heritage. And today uh, he will uh, present uh, this. Uh, um, uh, a keynote titled the, Man the Management of the Magum uh, Geopark and the Actions Undertaken by the African Network of Geoparks to Promote the Geoparks Concept to African Local Government. Thank you so much, dear Mr. Dries Achwal, uh, for accepting uh, our invitation. It's an honor to have you uh, with us. Uh, it's very important that uh, the person that is in charge uh, about the, the, the geoparks uh, in Africa could be uh, with us and share and talk about, about the reality of the geoparks in, in this continent. And you, with your large and recognized experience in, in geoparks, are the perfect um, keynote speaker to do that. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presence, for accepting our invitation. That uh, really honors you. So, dear friend, the uh, floor is yours. Hello? Pastor, do you hear me? Yes. Yes, please. And it's perfect. It's already uh, ready to the presentation. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for everyone. Uh, thank you, Archer, for uh, inviting me to participate in this uh, course. And uh, the, the honor is for me to, to be with you to present the, the African UNESCO Global Geopark Network and the Mgun Global Geopark, the, the, the Geopark hosting the, the, the 10 international conference uh, for uh, Global Geopark Network in next, next year. Uh, I'm Dries Ashbal, the, the Director General of Service of the Region of Nivla Khnifra in Morocco, and I'm the President of the uh, Magoon Geopark, uh, who is the first geopark labelized by uh, UNESCO uh, in Africa and, and, and the Arab state. We have the charge to accompany the, 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 the African UNESCO uh, aspiring to be geopark in Africa and Arab state. And I'm, uh, since uh, two years, the president of uh, the African UNESCO Global Geopark with uh, Ngorongoro Lingai in Tanzania. My presentation, uh, I can uh, give some uh, ideas some about, about our network, regional network, and uh, the experience of Ngorongoro uh, Geopark as a model socioeconomic in geotourism and development in our, our region. I'm so sorry, I think I have, okay. As you know, the, the family of uh, Geopark Network is, uh, I think, uh, you know this, it's 177 Geopark in the, in, uh, in the world, with, uh, unfortunately, only two Geopark in Africa. It's uh, Mugun Geopark uh, labeled in 2014, and the Ngorongoro Lingai in, uh, in 2019. 
And as you, you have there, the creation of Mugonjo Park in 2005, the creation of Ngorongoro Ngoro Lingai in 2009, and the labeling Mugonjo Park in 2014, and the labeling of Ngorongoro Ngai in 2019, and the creation of the network, regional network of Africa uh, in, in Rabat in Morocco in 2019, uh, by the Senian, the, the protocol uh, with the presence of the president of the region, of the Ministry of Energy and Mine, and Nicola Zoros, the president of uh, executive board of Global Geopark Network, work and the president of uh, regional network uh, in the world, Guy Martini and, and other persons for the celebra celebrating this, this creation. Uh, with the, the, the concept and the, the grant for Africa, who is launched by uh, UNESCO and Global Geopark Network, last year in the first edition, we have 24 projects aspiring to be geopark in Africa. And we selected four projects, uh, the one in Tunisia, Kenya, uh, the Kingdom of Eswatini and Madagascar. And we have two geopark, Tanzania, Ngorongoro Ngai, and Mugon in the north of Morocco. The structure of our uh, network, we have the president, the vice president, we have changing the, 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 the position between Gorongoro and, and Mugun. And we have a coordination commission, the advisory committee and secretariat and logistic arrangements and the, 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 the group, uh, work group uh, work to do international uh, de development of uh, partnership and partner agreement with, with other geopark uh, in, every, in other countries. The, uh, the goals or the objective of our network is to, to provide, to, to promote the network and to create a platform to help and to do the capacity building of uh, local government in Africa to, uh, to, to use the concept of geopark like a, a methodology of development of, of, of their territory and, uh, and to, to, the, to, to protect the, the heritage and the geological heritage of, of, uh, of their territory. And as you know, Africa is very rich by the, the, this patrimony, uh, heritage geologic and the archaeologic and material and, and the immaterial uh, patrimony. The activities of our New York is organiz organization of the regional geopark conference, workshop, seminar, capacity building, common project and common publication, exchange program and exchange experience, promotional activities and support the new project and aspiring geopark in, in, in Africa and to provide our role is to provide a network platform, provide support, particularly in the sustainable economic development of geopark area with emphasis in, uh, uh, on in enhancing geotourism and natural tourism activities, geoeducation and geoconservation with an emphasis of bottom of methodology and invol involvement and procession of local population. The third one is career or promotion, promotion and exchange of scientific and tourism technology and expertise, as well as education and awareness raising program. The activities of our, our network, the first one is to prepare the first African conference on Geopark in Arusha uh, in Tanzania. Uh, and the second one is to organize uh, in the next November in Morocco, the, the first national conference on Geopark and the protect area with the presence, <laughs> please. And the creation of the management commission, participation in the selection of uh, selection commission of the Aspirin Geopark uh, applied to integrate the big family of Geopark. And we support a new project in Morocco, in Arab state, in the, in the, in the West Africa, in the uh, Francophone Africa. The African UNESCO Global Geopark Network will be officially established uh, online during the first African UNESCO Global Geopark, organizing the meeting between uh, African UNESCO Global Geopark, Moroccan region and university about the play on the new, the new project in November 2022, organization of the first webinar on UNESCO Global Geopark of Africa and Arab states, 
and participation in the different uh, webinar and uh, activities organized by, by, by UNESCO uh, of Arab state in, in Cairo, in Lebanon, in Dubai, and other, uh, other states. Uh, now I, I can present uh, the model of the example of, of uh, Magoon Geopark. As you know, the, the, our Geopark is starting in, in, in 2000 and is labelized in 2014. And the revalidation of our geopark is in 2019. And this year, we received the, the, the expert of UNESCO to uh, the, the, the second revalidation of Mugon, Mugon Geopark. Our territory is, uh, the area is 5,700 kilometers, five collectivity territorials, and 2,000 uh, population who lives in, in, in this territory. Uh, we have more than uh, 100 geosites uh, with uh, importance and value, uh, geological and regional architectural uh, value. Then, and, and we have two, uh, 22 geosites who is labelized and recognized by, by, by UNESCO. Some uh, picture about uh, some geosites in, in, in our geopark, the Ozod waterfall the natural bridge of uh, Iminifri, the architectural uh, patrimony heritage of the territory in Tenagamalt village or Mexican village, the ingra rock engraving in Tizian Terrest, who is a big uh, project that we work with the Ministry of Culture to prepare a, a national park of engraving, uh, rock engraving in, the, in, in this area. The Happy Valley of Aitibogmez, who is uh, an important geosite in, 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 our, uh, in our geopark. The Berber Passage, the architecture uh, of the site of energy, the Cathedral of Mastferan, uh, the site when uh, we practice a lot of uh, sports, climbing, uh, rafting, uh, canyoning, and other act sports activities. The Tahia, who is the, the, the third uh, important site when we practice climbing in, in the world. We receive a lot of sports uh, athletes who come to practice climbing in this, in this area. The, the dinosaur tracks in a lot of uh, geosites in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the territory of Mugon Geopark and the, the collective attics of uh, Amzrei in Zawita Hansal. And we have we developed a lot of infrastructure in in, in the area of, uh, of Mugon Geopark, the like the, the Museum uh, of Geology in, in Azilal, the, the, the Juno Park in Ozud, uh, the, the home or the house of Geopark in in the in three uh, geosites, Iwaridan, Zawit Ahansal, and Eight Eight Bugmez, and in Azilal. And we developed the road infrastructure and a lot of infrastructure in, in our territory. Uh, some photos of, uh, for the, the Museum of Azilal, uh, the Geological Museum, who is the central compound of the Mugul Geopark. It is an excellent structure, distinguished by its architectural and uh, museology and uh, scenography, who is distinct in, in, in all the, the Kingdom of, of, of Morocco. Some uh, overview of the, of the, the Museum of, uh, of Azilal. Our region uh, is uh, toward a geopark as a territory project and toward an uh, appropriate by all actors who are committed to do sustainable development of the target area. We have uh, a network in, in, this, in this area with the 45 uh, local association and the more than 14 cooperative uh, women co cooperative who works in this territory. And we, we, we work with uh, the concept of attractivity of territory and competitivity of this territory and to preserve the, the, uh, the heritage of, of this, this territory. The, the management of, of, of our uh, geopark or the model of the, ge the management of the, our geopark is based in, 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 uh, with uh, the accompaniment of the region of Bnei Mlal Khnefra. Uh, we have a uh, COSGM, so, uh, the Guidance and the Monitoring Council, who is presided by the, the Wally of the region and the president of the, of the region. This, this structure will determine and develop the strategy of our geopark, the guiding the scientific and technical committee 
approve action plan of our association and the mobilization of fund for the implementation of the action action plan. The management of geopark structure, we have uh, an executive board and the uh, operational uh, team who work and to execute the, the action plan uh, uh, every year. Uh, you, the, the, the plan, the, the annual plan of uh, action plan of our geopark is about the governance, the preservation of uh, intangible and material heritage, to geo education. We organize a lot of activity with students, with, uh, with schools, and the promotion uh, of, of our territory, the improvement of the socioeconomic uh, situation of the population who lives in this territory, and we develop the infrastructure of, of the territory of the geopark. Some actions that we, we have that, that our geopark have uh, is a success story in, in our uh, in our territory is the implementation of the cooperative support and program by sector of activities uh, based by uh, diagnostic support needs preparation of training and support plan and implementation of accompanying the, the plan we organize uh, a lot of uh, activities for planting uh, 315 hectares of, of saffron, planting <laughs> of the, the fruit trees uh, in different locality of the, of the geopark, uh, purchase and leveled, uh, and the packaging of the benefit of geopark partner cooperative, deployment of the cooperative profile, best practice manual, and uh, labelizing the, the, the product, lo local product by, by, by ONSA, Certificate, training, and support for 44 cooperative and other, other activities. And in social and solidarity economy, we support for the creation of the women cooperatives. We have more than uh, 2,000 women who work in, 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 the, in, the, co in the women cooperative and they product and they, 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 ha they, they have a possibility to change uh, their condition of, of life support uh, Tree Safran Cooperative and for, uh, 14 municipality, which 1,700 1, farmer benefit from the project, production of pistachio plant, project of create the milk chain production with uh, in, in the municipality of Etboli and Energy in a partnership agreement with the Geopark of Massif de Bosch in, in France. Uh, development of the milk uh, sector, support of craft and uh, agriculture cooperative, support for operator for sustainable uh, geotourism and development of sports initiative and educational exchange and change visit between uh, projects aspiring to be Geopark in Morocco, in Arab state, in the, in the north, north uh, and west of Africa. Uh, others, uh, some photos about uh, some other activities that, that uh, we have developing in, in our territory. In geotourism, we have the partnership with tourism stakeholders with the, the Guide of Mountain project to create a specific menu uh, of um, Gonjo Park menu designed and creation of a tourism circuit and location of geopark circuit development of a training plan for the benefit of guide and trainer development of geotourism map and uh, edu educating tour guide on the environment and importance of the geopark opening of the training center for tourist guide in the happy valley of Aitbogmez and creation of outdoor sports map creation of uh, a network of museum including sites and exhibition that contribute directly to the interpretation and enhancement of the territory wealth, seeing of the commitment chart with Turkey for tourist establishment. Training and support for tourism stakeholders, partnership agreement with five travel agency for the promotion of the tourism asset and the promotion of internal tourism, professional uh, photography and creation of catalog a tourist accommodation geopartner, networking of tourism stakeholders and geopartners of, uh, of the Mgun, Mgun Geopark, 
organization of awareness day and ecology visit for high school students and organization of the first and the second edition of the International Geopark virtual meeting of the plastic arts from 19 to 13 May 2020 and 2021. The creation of ecological garden in schools, organization of re, uh, reforestation campaign, launch of common and trans world cleaning up and, and painting initiative, organization day of musical and artistical animation for the benefit of the students of the leaving school in Enate Bogomaz. Uh, a lot of uh, activities with students uh, in, in geosite and uh, geological site uh, with the University of uh, Robat, Brimlal, and Marrakesh and Agadir. Uh, organization of the first half marathon of the geopark in 2022 and organization of three geotrial each year in the territory of the geopark in partnership with local association. Structuring and promoting the activities carried out the level of the geopark Mugon territory as a uh, climbing, rafting, uh, canyoning, trial, marathon, and other uh, activities. And creating the Mgun Global Geop uh, the Mgun Club of Mountain and Water Sports. This year, and uh, the, the, the last month, the, the, the national Moroccan team who, uh, who participate in the international competition of rafting is constituted by uh, 19 persons uh, from the club uh, Mugun Geopark. Installation of your Geopark signage, you updating the map of Geopark, you updating of the website, production of documentary of the Geopark and production of the communication sheets and strong presence on social network. Organization of professional photo taking, there is a uh, touristic area, creation of eight innovative videos for tourism promotional and the strengthening of the Geopark brand, participation in several radio broadcasts to raise awareness to the Geopark and creation to the new, to the new discover mobile application of, of, of Mugun Geopark. Awareness of uh, some other initiative that we organized, the, the cleaning up, up days, the World Clean Days celebrating every year, International Mountain Days with the participation of a lot of uh, students from uh, the uh, universities. Good Global Geopark UNESCO celebrate every day the Mountain Days and do organize uh, a lot of uh, visit in the geological medium of Azilel and the, the medium of, of Demenet and the medium of uh, rock engraving in, in, in this interest. Organization of Awareness Day for high school students and integration of society, civil society. Celebration of World Environment Day. Uh, preparation of the first geopark Ecological, uh, ecological Festival, participation of the Mgun Global Geopark in the International Conference on Sustainable Tourism in Tangier in Morocco, preparation of the official opening of the medium and creation of the African Geopark Network and hosting the 10th International Conference in 2023 and the request for public benefits. There we have some uh, information, the website, Instagram, and uh, the mail of, of our geopark. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dries, for this fantastic and very inspiring uh, presentation uh, that, in fact, uh, shows the, uh, how you are able to, <coughs> to face many of the challenges that uh, and geopark uh, are facing in the daily basis, but especially uh, in Africa countries when sometimes uh, you, you faces other other cha challenges uh, together. But it's great, great example, uh, and for sure there are you have already a lot of people congratulating you uh, in the chat, 
but uh, now um, uh, I will open the floor for the questions to Mr. Dries Sashwa. I'm so, Arthur. I'm so sorry for my my English. I, no, I your English <laughs> was perfect. Look, uh, as, as far as I know, we don't have any any participant from uh, from uh, United Kingdom uh, in this. Uh, so uh, we are talking a, a, a universal English. It's different from the British Thank English. You. So <laughs> don't worry. We all uh, un un understood the. Uh, the other and uh, Arthur, I'm I'm open to answer for any question in uh, Arabic, in French, in the other language for the participation who want to to ask with other language. I'm open to. Okay, to okay, great, great. If if you want to ask to uh, Mr. Dries Ashwal in, in Arabic or in French, uh, so be his guest. Well, uh, I, I, I will open the, <laughs> the floor. Um, Dries, um, in this moment, in this moment, uh, the reality uh, of the African um, geoparks, uh, we have two, as you, as you said. Uh, we have already four other territories, uh, one in Tunisia, another in Kenya, another in Eswantini, and another in Madagascar that achieved the UNESCO grant to de de develop uh, new, new projects, new aspiring uh, geoparks. Um, and uh, we have already uh, other candidates and uh, even uh, it's, uh, the announcement of the, the, new, uh, the new grants is for some, uh, in the short term uh, will occur. Uh, so, uh, you believe that uh, in the next uh, five years we can uh, have how much more geoparks? You have a feeling uh, you, uh, what are the main issue to, uh, to avoid uh, or to, to difficult better, to difficult uh, the geoparks in Africa? Thank you, Arthur. Uh, I think uh, your goal in, in African UNESCO Global uh, Geopark is to help and to uh, to help the, the local government to to accept the concept of global geopark as uh, a, 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 a concept of territorial development mm -hmm. of, of their area. Why I, I uh, in 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 March, I participated in, in Expo Dubai uh, 2020 in the hub of uh, United Nations, and I present the model of uh, territorial development of Mugun Geopark. As you know, our geopark is in uh, a mountain area with a lot of difficult, with the, uh, the population who lives in this territory have, have a lot of problems with the equipment, with road, uh, electricity, water, uh, economic activities for population. And with this uh, concept of geopark, we, uh, we have all the, uh, the local actors who have the confidence in, in our association. And we work together. We, have, we organize a lot of activities. We accompanied uh, the, the cooperative and the local association and the municipality in, in our territory. Actually, they, uh, we realized that, that we have uh, a good result in, 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 this, in this territory. Uh, but in, in Africa, uh, I think the problem is the, the, the management structure, how to manage a, a park national or regional park or, 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 or a geopark. Uh, the, 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 the government structure have a lot of problem uh, and they, they, they haven't the time and the, the, uh, the practitioner, the scientist who can work in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in this area. Why the model of Mugun Geopark 
the management structure who is an association with the, uh, the, the je sais pas comment dire uh, Arthur the, the bénévoles the volunteers yes the volunteers yes volunteers, the volunteers. Who, who work in this structure and who developed this uh, the, this uh, this idea and we, we i hope that uh, with the grant the program grant for africa uh, last year we have uh, 24 projects and we selected four who have the potential to be uh, geopark in, uh, in, the, in the next year this year i think we have a lot of number of geopark only in morocco we support six projects in morocco I think we have one in the Middle Atlas, one the east of Morocco, the other uh, that uh, someone who is speaking to, is, is in Tata, uh, the Geopark of Jibelbeni, the Ismail with you, with, uh, with us in, in, in Zagora. Uh, I think we have another, another Geopark in the north of Morocco. We have eight, uh, Ali Ouled Seed, who is uh, us in, in the group. Uh, who work in a good project in, in the, 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 the beautiful cities of, of Shawin and the coast of Romara sure. in the north of Morocco. Yes. I think uh, this year uh, and, and next year, it's possible to have uh, more geopark in Africa. We have all the potential. Oh, for, uh, for sure. Waterfall, yeah. yes. I think we have visiting the, uh, Kenya Yes, yes, uh, Baringo, in, in, Baringo, Baringo, the, yes. the Rift, Rift Valley, Rift the Valley, Rift Valley Baringo, Baringo, the, the Kalimanjaro in, in Tanzania, in the South Africa, in Eswatini, Madagascar, uh, we support another uh, project in Senegal, in Cameroon. Yes. Uh, I think in Egypt, we have, we have uh, an important potential uh, in Egypt, in Libya. And we have, uh, we have already here from, uh, in this case, from uh, Arabic countries, uh, a participant from uh, Pakistan, and uh, also we have now a, a question, uh, a question for Amera Hussein from uh, Iraq, uh, uh, and they, they they want to know uh, what are the, the guidelines to to establish to create uh, new geoparks, and um, this information is uh, already in the site uh, official site of UNESCO, but uh the it's our commitment all all of those that uh, have responsibilities in in the geoparks and being member for example of the global geoparks uh, executive board uh, to to share the experience and the know-how uh, and to to explain about this is why uh, this kind of uh, uh, intensive courses are uh, also uh, very important um Yes, we have a, a question from Tim Medinka from Tanzania. So, Tim, uh, take the floor. Uh, switch on the your your sound, please. Okay, um, I switch off. Thank you. I was I wanted to switch on the voice. Okay. Is it uh, is it okay now? It's okay. It's okay, Tim. Okay. Sorry, I, I switched on the video. Yeah, don't worry. Oh, okay. Um, thank you so much for this uh, very good presentation, uh, Dries. Um, I, I have one, one uh, comment maybe uh, or a question. Uh, what, what we have experienced in Tanzania seems like it's so easy to establish a, a, a geopark when there is a connection with a already existing protected area, but we have very potential areas for geopark, and we think can be even non-PA, non-protected area, and we think probably will qualify to be a geopark. So it's so it's so challenging when it comes to to, to think of even uh, proposing those uh, potential areas because we think has to be connected to the existing protected area. I don't know, uh, maybe uh, Professor Dries or whoever can help me on that, uh, on clarity. But uh, otherwise, uh, we find out that uh, geoparks have been uh, the one that is existing in Tanzania. I'm in the National Committee uh, for, for, for the geopark. 
we we find out that it works really well and uh, with the organizing uh, different uh, authorities that make this one big uh, geopark um, i mean the the the, the, the leading uh, committee uh, from the district uh, council and, and the government and the, the, the Ngorongoro conservation area, they all work together to make this happen. But the, the, the challenge comes when there is no protected area connected to it. How does it work when it comes to that? Thank you. So there is. Thank you, uh, Tim. I think uh, with with the Professor Joshua and, and Ramadani in uh, in Gorongoro Lingai, we work together. There, uh, the, in front, I think the problem for Africa. I think uh, each time we have a problem. When we organ, we we prepare to organize the first conference of Geopark in Africa in Arusha. We have the the pandemic of COVID. And we are waiting to, to have a light condition to organize this, this, this event. Uh, it's the, it's the, I think it's the, the, uh, a big and important possibility to invite all the, 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 the a project aspirant to be geopark, the national park, the regional park in, in, in East and West and Central Africa to participate in this event and to share with them the experience of uh, Ngoro Lingai and, and, and the Mugon Geopark to uh, prepare the, to apply uh, to be to be Geopark. I think the, the, the region or the, the territory when we have uh, a national park or the regional park, I think it's easy to, to, to apply to, to, to transform or to, or to this area will be uh, return a, a UNESCO Global Geopark. But in the area when we have infrastructure, is, uh, it's possible to create uh, an association who can take with, with, with the consultation with local government, with university, with scientists, and to prepare the, uh, the, the scientist inventory of, ge of geosite and the, the map of the territory with cons in concertation between local government and the, the association and to apply to be, to be Geopark. Uh, I hope that in, in November, the next November, when we organize the, the, the first national conference of Geopark and Protect Area in, in, in Morocco, we invite our colleague in, uh, in Tanzania and uh, the, the, the project who is selected last year and, and this year to, to participate in, in, in this event and to, uh, to take uh, a lot of idea, a lot of experience to, uh, that we can share with, with them to prepare their application to, to, be, to be Geopark. Thank you, Archer. Okay, so we have another question from uh, Luc Akil. Uh, Luc, please switch on your microphone. Okay, it's okay. It's, yes, it's okay. So please. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, I want to ask my question in French because my English is not very. Don't, don't worry, it's it's so, English like like mine and like uh, Greece, so we understand. Là, ça m'arrange d'avoir la question en français. Ça sera mieux. Oh, ça. Okay, merci <laughs> beaucoup. Si tu veux, peut-être. Uh, okay, en fait, je suis enseignant à l'université Yaoundé 1 au Cameroun. Et depuis près de cinq ans, je travaille sur le géohéritage dans le patrimoine géologique. J'ai mis deux étudiants en master de, dans ces différents thèmes. Et je suis bien content de savoir que un réseau africain de, des géoparcs est déjà créé, que vous dirigez. Déjà, vous avez, dans vos différentes interventions, vous avez même apporté des, des réponses déjà à plusieurs questions que je voulais poser. Je vous exhorte juste à plus de communication parce que pour dire vrai, je n'étais pas au courant. Je n'étais pas au courant de l'existence de, de ce réseau. Il m'aurait beaucoup aidé parce que j'ai un projet en cours. Parce que nous sommes encore à la phase d'évaluation des géosites, euh, d'inventaire et d'évaluation des géosites. Euh, savoir qu'il y a déjà une plateforme sur laquelle je peux m'appuyer en me rapprochant par exemple de vous. Euh, une, une, une information capitale que j'ai eue pendant, cette, enfin, pendant ce, ce petit forum. Et je vous dis merci déjà pour tout ce que vous avez présenté. 
Et j'aimerais savoir maintenant, euh, vous parlez d'une association en fait, qu'on devait créer parce que vous avez clairement exposé les problèmes que nous avons en Afrique avec nos gouvernements qui n'ont même pas encore compris l'intérêt de promouvoir euh, les GEOPAC. Est-ce que si, est-ce que, euh, à, en fait, à quel niveau êtes-vous avec le projet de formation d'une association qui pourra regrouper et nous les universitaires et nos différents gouvernements pour une meilleure promotion des GEOPAC et et nous permettre de proposer des projets assez pertinents une fois avec votre aide. Voilà un peu l'orientation que je voulais donner à ma question. Merci. Merci, Lac. Arthur, uh, with, with your authorization, I can answer with French language. Yes, yes, please. Yes, please. It's okay. Euh, merci, Lac, pour votre question. Euh, je crois que le problème de la structure de gestion d'un géoparc ce n'est pas seulement au Cameroun ou au Sénégal, ou même, même chose au Maroc. Même si on a déjà un jeu parc au Maroc, on a le même problème. Les projets qu'on est en train d'accompagner actuellement, on a six projets au Maroc, c'est le même problème. C'est le gouvernement local, l'université, les associations sur le territoire n'arrivent pas à se mettre en entente pour, pour créer une structure de gestion homogène avec les universitaires, avec les, 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 les cadres des départements qui sont concernés. Je parle du tourisme, de la culture, d'énergie et mine, de l'agriculture et autres, pour créer une structure autonome et avec un appui financier pour gérer un géoparc. Le mois dernier, on a reçu la directrice de la géologie au niveau du ministère d'énergie et mine du Sénégal, qui a visité notre territoire. Avant, on avait un stagiaire de la République démocratique du Congo. Euh, C'était la même chose. On a travaillé avec le, la Côte d'Ivoire et avec le Burkina Faso sur le, la région centre-nord euh, centre du Burkina Faso et la région de Cavalli en Côte d'Ivoire pour euh, créer des projets de géoparcs. Mais toujours, on a ce, cette problématique. Soit les gouvernements locaux euh, ne comprennent pas facilement le concept il se demande à quoi va servir l'UNESCO, à ce que l'UNESCO donne de l'argent, à ce qu'il va contribuer au développement. Ils n'arrivent pas à comprendre qu'on a un concept, on a un territoire labellisé. C'est à nous, c'est à nous d'utiliser notre intelligence collective pour exploiter le label UNESCO et de vendre notre produit. Comment rendre notre, notre territoire attractif, créer de la dynamique territoriale, avoir plus de touristes sur notre territoire, développer les coopératives féminines et l'artisanat et les produits locaux et donner un label à nos produits pour plus de, de, de création d'emplois, création de la richesse pour les populations qui vivent sur ce territoire. Je crois le, 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 le succès ou le, 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 le clé de la réussite du jeu par Lumgoun, c'est qu'on avait à la tête de l'administration régionale des gouverneurs qui ont vraiment compris le concept de Geoparc. Voilà. Mm -hmm. C'est eux qui ont pris l'initiative de créer une association parce qu'on a beaucoup réfléchi à ce qu'on va créer une société de développement régionale, à ce que c'est l'administration qui va s'en charger de la gestion du Geoparc. Et il a été euh, évident que la meilleure solution, c'est de créer une association qui est régie mm -hmm. par la, la réglementation, une association mm -hmm. sur laquelle on a des cadres de l'État avec diffère, mm -hmm. différentes disciplines qui représente le ministère de l'Agriculture, la Culture, le Tourisme, l'Énergie et Mine, l'Université. Et comme ça, cette structure avec un, un, un COASGM, un conseil d'orientation et de suivi qui est présidé par le gouverneur de la province, qui euh, adopte le, le budget, qui adopte le, le, le plan d'action de l'association. Comme ça, on est arrivé à, à gérer notre géoparc d'une manière extraordinaire. Je crois avec nous, il y a Tarek, Tarek de la Tunisie, même, même chose en Tunisie. Tunisie, c'est le, 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 le ministère d'énergie et mine qui est chargé du dossier. Mais le ministère, il est à Tunis, à la capitale. Le projet, il est à 500 km au sud, au Dahar du Tunis. Quand les équipes de l'énergie et mine sont là, il y a toute une dynamique, il y a des réunions, il y a un travail qui se fait. Une fois qu'ils retournent sur, sur la Tunisie, automatiquement, il n'y a rien qui se fait. Donc là, on a le problème. C'est comment faire du projet le mettre à la main des autochtones, de la population qui vit sur le territoire, des cadres qui okay. sont sur place, qu'ils comprennent, qu'ils adoptent le concept et qu'ils euh, qu puissent le, 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 le développer auprès de, de, des acteurs locaux. 
Je crois que j'ai répondu à votre question. Et je reste attentif à vos questions. J'ai partagé mon mail et aussi le, le site web du Geoparc. Si vous avez besoin de Merci toute beaucoup, merci vraiment. Et je, je vais vous contacter. Pour... On est à votre disposition. OK. D'accord. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's important to, uh, to refer that the, the, the ability to communicate in other languages, in French, in Spanish, in Portuguese, um, uh, could help uh, in this uh, uh, discussion time uh, after the end of the, the, uh, the keynotes. Uh, and uh, uh, this is possible. So uh, now it's time to give the floor to Tarek Ben Fraj from t uh, Tunisia. Uh, so please put your question. Thank you very much, Arthur. Thank okay. you, uh, Dr. Gris. Um, I'd like to, to ask a small <laughs> question if we have time about, uh, about uh, the, the place or the situation of scientific researches uh, in the Mgul management structure. Is there any um, specific um, place to scientific researches in collaboration with universities in Morocco or uh, uh, in other countries? Uh, because I believe that um, uh, scientific researches and works form a solid basis for building and maintaining uh, geoparks. Yes, Tarek, I think the, 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 in, in the beginning, when we start to work uh, to create the Geopark de Mgun, the, we have working with the, with the, with the scientists, with the, with the University of Marrakesh and the University of, of Rabat, uh, and and actually in the in the structure of our our uh, our geopark we have uh, uh, a committee committee of scientists who is pre presided by by uh, Mohamed Boutkiot, who is a geologist in the University of Rabat, and who is the vice president of the Mugun Mugun uh, Association geopark Association. And, and we have other other committees in in uh, education, geodiversity, uh, sports activities, and uh, communication, and other 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 committees. And we have a lot of agreement partnership with with the universities of uh, of Bordeaux in France, with the university and international university of Ifra, in Ifran, the University of Qadayyad in Marrakesh, the University of Mohammed V in, the, in, in Rabat, and the University of Sultan Mulay in Benin Milan. And we work with, with the, all the universities of, of uh, neighbors of, the, the, of our area to, and we receive a lot of students who prepared masters, the, the uh, PhD in, in, our, in, in our, our territory. And they published a lot of articles from from our our territory thank you thank you very much okay <laughs> thank you thank you so much uh, for your uh, active participation thank you mr dris ashwell for your great presentation so interesting and for sure a lot of people that uh, uh, if you don't know, now realize that uh, you are uh, the man that are, are leading all the process uh, in, uh, in Africa. Uh, and for sure that uh, you already um, give uh, your uh, email address in the chat. So for sure, many people will contact you. Thank, thank you so much also for that. Um, and th this is very, very important. Now uh, it is time for uh, a, small, uh, a small break. Uh, for those that are in Latin America, will be more breakfast. Uh, for those in Europe, for the lunch, and for those in Asia, for sure, for the, for the dinner or um, for the other <laughs> uh, water or juice. Uh, it's time for a, a small, uh, small break. Uh, thank you for those that uh, attend this morning, uh, this intensive course. We will return uh, at uh, in um, 53 minutes. Uh, so at uh, 14 GMT plus one um, sharp. 
uh, with the, the conference of the Dr. George Eshiamuata. Uh, it will be for sure also a very interesting um, keynote. Uh, he is the deputy director of the Kenyan National Commission uh, of UNESCO. And uh, uh, for sure that uh, uh, following what uh, Dries uh, already shared with us, uh, he will give uh, more details about uh, now in specific the reality uh, in Kenya. Uh, but uh, he have already uh, the broad vision from the, someone that works uh, in, uh, in the National Commission of UNESCO. So you are all uh, invited to return in 53 minutes uh, to start with this conference. Thank you, thank you so much. Um, bon appetit. <laughs> uh, thank you for your presence. Thank you very much. Arthur, Arthur. Yes. Uh, je vais partager, uh, I share with you the, the presentation. I think there is a lot of person in the chat who want to. Y yes, please. Yes, please. Have, if, I, if, I, you can, if, if you can share your presentation, we will uh, distribute this. You receive it by, by mail. Okay. Uh, thank you. But, but if, if, if you want, you, you, can, you can do by, by yourself in chat directly. No problem. In the, in the chat. Uh, you can uh, in in the in in the right side you have a link with like a, a page you click on this and you uh, choose the uh, the file to download thank you archer Okay, welcome. Thank you. Thank you once again, Dries, for your great presentation. It was very, uh, was really, really valuable uh, and important. Thank you. Good afternoon, uh, good, good morning for some of you and good evening for the others. Uh, it's 14 GMT plus one uh, time, uh, Lisbon time. Uh, we will start the second half uh, of the second day of this uh, six international summer university on geoparks, sustainable regional development and uh, healthy lifestyles. Thank you to all of you uh, for your, uh, your presence attending uh, this uh, uh, intensive, intensive course. Uh, and during uh, this second half uh, of the course, we will have a very, very interesting uh, set uh, of uh, keynotes uh, with uh, many specialists sharing uh, with us very, very good examples uh, regarding or related uh, with uh, this main topic uh, of this uh, summer university, oceans, people, and cooperation for sustainable development. Mm -hmm. uh, now we will start uh, with the, um, the keynote communication presented by Dr. George Eshiamuata. Uh, he is the uh, he is professor of the Egerton University uh, in Kenya. And he is also a deputy director uh, of the Kenya National Commission uh, for UNESCO. Um, he is uh, relate, uh, working uh, very closely 
with those that are trying uh, to develop uh, UNESCO global geoparks uh, in Kenya. And uh, he is also a very, very good communicator. So for sure, you will enjoy uh, his presentation. Dear uh, Dr. George Eshemwata, thank you. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Uh, it's something that uh, honored uh, us and uh, for sure will enrich a lot um, the experience of, of all of those that uh, attend this uh, intensive course. Thank you and uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Professor Artur. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, participants, uh, I greet you from Nairobi, Kenya, Jambo. Uh, it's a, a great one and privilege uh, to be able to speak to you this afternoon. And uh, I believe that we'll be able to share, we'll be able to discuss, we'll be able to interact uh, during this session. As a uh, Prof has mentioned, I'm um, George Shamata. I work at the Kenya National Commission for UNESCO as the deputy director in, char in charge of natural sciences. Here we deal with matters to do with, um, of course, environment, hydrology, ocean and marine issues, geoparks, marine and biosphere reserves, uh, geosciences, including the geopark. So in as much as uh, I would have loved also to discuss something on the oceans, but in the context of uh, my discussion, my presentation this afternoon, I'll only, I'll only focus on, um, on the geopark uh, and the process we have, uh, we've started in Kenya to nominate uh, the first geopark in the country. And of course, if this happens soon, uh, it will be the, the third in, in Africa. So the title of my presentation is Natural and Cultural Heritage Conservation and Sustainable Development Nexus, uh, using a case study of the Great Rift Valley Aspiring uh, Geopark. This is the outline of my presentation. Uh, in brief, I uh, will be looking at uh, UNESCO Geopark program. And uh, I think considering the the audience I have this afternoon, I may not really spend too much time on that because we've had so many presentations from eminent people, experts in the areas of, of geopark, and uh, I, 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 I don't think I would want to repeat that. But then we'll also look at development challenges. Then I'll delve into the Baringo Great Rift Valley Aspiring Geopark with a focus on the geological, natural, and cultural heritage, opportunities for addressing sustainable development, nomination process, and milestones, lessons learned as far as this pro pro process is concerned. And then we'll go to, it, to the conclusion. So of course, uh, global geoparks, uh, we've already been told what they are. And uh, of course, very new concept in the UNESCO uh, family of designations. And so I think we already now aware what they are, what they're meant to do. But I think more importantly is to look at the three pillars of the, the geopark. And one of course is protection. The other one is sustainable development. And the third one being education. And so perhaps in the context of the Kenyan process, why we are very interested in the geopark concept, which of course, as I said, is a very new concept. It hasn't been embraced much in Africa, of course, considering that we only have two geoparks in the continent. What makes it very attractive is the fact that it's looking at these three very important pillars and looking at the value of the heritage, looking at sustainable development and, and this is now where we look we're saying that people matter we're also looking at education and of course we're saying that this this concept provides lifelong education of lifelong learning opportunities and that's why it really looks like a very attractive concept and uh, that of course explains why we are interested 
to embrace it as a, as a country. There are many developmental challenges. I may not list all of them here, but looking at in the context of the geopark, uh, we are looking at loss of biodiversity, uh, cultural and paleontological heritage. We're looking at poverty. We're looking at illiteracy. We're looking at natural disasters, which come in various forms, including landslides, floods, fires, droughts, or wildfires, and others. We're also looking at cultural deterioration. That you know, if you visit some countries, and of course, Kenya is not an exception, you find that culture, because of global globalization, uh, some uh, segments of culture are becoming deteriorated because of now, of course, as many people as possible are embracing uh, modernity. But of course, modernity is good, but of course, also you're saying that culture is good. And so we should not let it to deteriorate. Then, of course, we're also talking about climate change. We're talking also about development with little or no reference to science. And so if you're looking at all these challenges, as I said, I was not able, I couldn't list all the challenges. There are many global challenges that the world is facing today. But I only focused on this few because they are really, when you're talking about geopark, these challenges are really talking to the geopark concept. Because if you're looking at the geopark concept, these are some of the challenges that this approach is meant to actually address. And we're looking at biodiversity, culture, we're looking at, uh, of course, geological heritage, cultural heritage, how do we address livelihoods, how do we address education, and of course, we've just looked at one of the pillars of the geopark is education, and so we are therefore saying that this concept can be able to address uh, illiteracy, uh, but of course, if looking at the concept, it can also be able to help us address disasters, by coming up with uh, disaster, disaster risk re reduction, um, of course, plans and strategies. We're also looking at how can we then be able to, to ensure that our culture does, cultures don't deteriorate. But of course, this concept also gives us an opportunity to be able to address climate change at a geopark level. And of course, with, 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 uh, with the ripple effects on the, on the whole country and of course the whole globe. So in terms of the Baringo Great Rift Valley Ge Aspiring Geopark, this is the geopark that um, we, we, are, we, are, we are in the process of having it nominated as the first geopark in the country. This is the map of, of Kenya, but of course it's just showing us, uh, uh, of course it's showing us uh, the, the, the Great Rift Valley, as it traverses through the country from, from, from the northern parts around Lake, Lake Trokana to the southern part around Lake Natra. And of course, this Great Rift Valley presents itself in various forms. And of course, we, we, it, it comes with various rock formations, different types of, of rocks. Uh, we're looking at tectonics, uh, of course, that we're looking at faults, we're looking at, at faults, we're looking at fractures that actually uh, really present themselves when you're discussing, when you're looking at the Great Rift Valley as a, a geomorphological feature. And of course, this feature has given rise to high diversity of landforms, uh, high diversity of landforms. It has also given uh, uh, rise to diversity of biomes and ecosystems, high floral and faunal diversity. And you will be surprised if you are to traverse through the, the Rift Valley, you, you will come across very high diversity of uh, geological formations, very high diversity of biomes and ecosystems. And of course, this then leads to high floral and faunal diversity. But of course, also, Within the Great Valley, the cultures of the local people is entwined uh, and, and, uh, and uh, has really been able to be preserved uh, due to the association and the attachment to the Great Rift Valley. It's a very interesting phenomenon. And of course, we know how it's a very big, long uh, geographical formation uh, traversing um, Several, several, several countries, all the way from Turkey uh, up to Mozambique. It's almost 
of course, it's more than 3,000 3, kilometers in the lens. And uh, one of the most dramatic sections slices through the East Africa, dividing Kenya into two uh, segments. It's estimated that it's approximately 45 million years old. Now, when you go to the Great Rift Valley, uh, Baringo, uh, Baringo Great Rift Valley, uh, a sparring geopark, uh, it consists of various geosites that are found within the Baringo administrative unit, which we call the Baringo County. And uh, this map is just a map to show Baringo County and some of the geosites that have been mapped uh, across the landscape. And when looking at this landscape, we are therefore looking at various geological formation ranging from falls, waterfalls, you're looking at valleys, deep gorges, but of course you're also looking at uh, at, at, at paleo lakes and geothermal, uh, uh, of course, uh, ge 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 geothermal activities, both present and past, that are then uh, presented uh, present um, themselves in various forms, uh, depending on their age, and depending on, of course, uh, the, the, the environmental conditions that existed at the time when this were, were formed. This is just to show the, the landscape of, of the Great Rift Valley. And if you're looking at the first, uh, the first photo, you're looking at farthest, that's the Kerio escarpment. And below, of course, now you're looking at uh, now where the Great Rift Valley, Baringo Great Rift Valley Geopark is, is based. Or oh, it's found in a landscape that, that ranges in terms of altitude from very high altitude, to very low uh, altitudes, especially in the lowlands. And as you can see, various uh, geomorph geomorphological uh, features, uh, uh, valleys, rocks, and, 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 and all that. Other features that uh, are associated with the Great Rift Valley include falls, uh, include rock formations uh, that, that present themselves in a uh, in a different ways, and if you can look at one of the rock, looking like a like a like a toad, actually, um, it, this is just as a result of, uh, uh, of course, uh, volcanic and, and the, the, the rifting uh, activities that happened in the past. So, of course, actually, this is one of the rocks that forms one of our geosites, which is the toad 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 rock. Because if you look at it, actually, you can really uh, appreciate its, 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 uh, uh, its resemblance to a toad. This is a landscape uh, showing one of the volcanoes, the, the Paca volcano. But of course, within the landscape, we also have uh, other features, uh, very interesting uh, and hills. Some of them, we, we of course, we refer to them as the clay sky, skyscraper. Some of them as tall as almost, almost 10, 10 meters, 10 meters tall. You can, you can see how, how tall this is if you're looking at, uh, if you're using this gentleman as, as the reference. We also have geysers and, and, and hot springs uh, in, some of, in some of the lakes and, or around some of the lakes within the Great Shift Valley both saline al alkaline lakes as well as uh, uh, freshwater lakes. These are very good example of uh, some um, geysers uh, around Lake Baringo, which is one of the, the, the two freshwater lakes that are, that are found uh, on the floor of the Great Rift Valley in Kenya. The lake has no obvious outlet, outlet and of course it's assumed that water seep through, seep through the lake sediments into faulted volcanic bedrock, a very good example of what uh, volcanicity can be able to do and, and how it can lead to processes happening above ground as well as below, below ground. These are some of the geysers, we call them the gushing geysers at Lake Borgoria. Uh, of course, and, uh, apparently at the moment it's, it's a bit flooded, so they may not be gushing as much as you can see in these pictures. But these pictures were taken a few years ago, uh, during which some of these hot springs and geysers would, 
old gash, of course, and jump up to as, as high as five meters, five meters high. There's something very unique about these hot springs because they, they contain thermophiles. Uh, these are some of the highly specialized microbial fauna that, are, that can be able to uh, survive under very extreme temperature conditions. These are some of the caves. Uh, this is the Lomechan cave, which is found um, in, in, in the, in, within the geopark, a very interesting cave. Uh, of course, um, uh, I, I identified as a potential geosite, but pending um, more research to be undertaken to just be able to understand um, the, the, the cave in, in more detail so that a lot of documentation can be done. We also have what the locals call the gold thunder, a very deep gushing hole uh, somewhere in the, within the landscape. Uh, with some very interesting cultural attachment. So if people will tell you about some very interesting uh, uh, superstitions and stories about about these, uh, these uh, what they are referring to as the gods, as the gods thunder. In terms of paleontology and archaeology, archaeology, the Great Rift Valley, actually, for for example, in Kenya, most of the sites that have have yielded. Uh, this very unique heritage, unique in the form of paleo and archaeological her heritage. Most of these sites are actually scattered on the floor of the, of the Rift Valley system, from as far as uh, the northern part of, of, of Kenya to the southern part of Kenya. And as you can see from this map, you, you can uh, really, sh it really shows that most of the sites actually found along the, the Great Rift Valley system. In terms of uh, paleontology called uh, discoveries, uh, a very good example of, of, of the, the richness, paleontological and archaeological richness of the Great Rift Valley and, and the Geopark, <clears throat> we have the, fi of the finding of one of the oldest human evidence in the world that lived six million years ago. And this is the Aurorian Tugenensis. We refer to him as the Millennium Man and is one of the oldest human, human oldest early humans. And uh, these were found within one of the sites uh, in the in the in the in the in the in the, in the in, within the geopark. We also have remains of both animal animal flora and fauna that are now found at what is believed to has have been a, a, the bed of a paleo lake. And this is manifested in the form of um, fossilized fish, uh, no, pieces of fish, pieces of, 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 of bones of, 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 for various uh, animals, animal species. Of course, a lot of study still needs to be done to be able to provide adequate documentation on, on this in the context of the, 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 the history in terms of time frames and there were perhaps when this, this existed. These are some of the archaeological sites. This is a, a site that actually was uh, documented for, perhaps for the first time during the mapping of the geosites within the geopark. And this is uh, what is believed to be an archaeological fortress. Uh, of course, a lot of research still needs to be done. There are plans to undertake research to be able to provide more documentation on, uh, on, um, on what really existed here. Of course, there are various hypotheses. There are various um, uh, community beliefs uh, about what, 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 what happened here, but I think it's upon science to now be able to document and come up with uh, really convincing uh, information based on, based on, on, on data. Uh, I, I think one thing that uh, this geopark concept has really helped us is the fact that during the mapping of some of the, these geosites, we've been able to document new information, perhaps new to science. Uh, and, and we believe this is a good thing because as part of mapping, you're able now, you want to know what do you have? What, what heritage do you have? And that takes you to various places that perhaps have never been visited 
or have been visited, but not much documentation has been done. And that is good for science. Uh, that's good for education, which is one of the pillars of the, of the, of the UNESCO Global uh, Geopark. Uh, this is one site where, uh, of course, uh, a lot of, um, there's a lot of excitement that some footprints were also discovered, but of course, it means that a lot of research uh, has to be undertaken to be able to provide more information on the same. And this is where we are now be leveraging on partnerships, uh, especially uh, from our friends, both in the North and in the South, to be able to see how can we be able to work together to document and provide additional information that is needed to be able to tell the you know, the time frames uh, for for the the, the 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 creatures, both man and other fauna that walked within this uh, within this landscape. This is a fossilized um, tree trunk. Uh, I know Greece uh, is well known for you know fossilized forests and all that, but I also think Kenya has its own share, perhaps not to the level of Greece and other other countries or other parts of the world. But I think we also have some fossilized uh, tree the specimens that have been discovered uh, at the floor of the Great Rift Valley, meaning that uh, this Great Rift this um, area is rich in uh, geo heritage that needs to be protected that needs to be preserved but of course that also needs to be made known to to the people the public so that they're able to understand the past even as look into the future culture is very important uh, there's a lot that culture can be able to do uh, to be able to provide opportunities for economic growth, provide opportunities for infrastructure development and, 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 and uh, development of uh, to provide uh, cultural uh, tourism. So this region is very rich in cultural heritage, and as we'd be able to see from from some of the, 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 the pictures here, uh, showing some of the artifacts that most of these are actually housed. Some of these are housed by families, but the, of course, through the GeoPA concept, the, now the, the discussion has been, how can we be able to bring all these artifacts and preserve them in a gallery, a public gallery, so that they are actually available for both the current and future generations. So they may be able to understand the tools, they're able to understand the equipment, they're able to understand you know, the utensils uh, uh, that uh, you know, our ancestors uh, have been using. But of course, we're also looking at uh, culture in, in the context of um, uh, both tangible and intangible heritage. Here, we're looking at communities that have really preserved their culture, you can even tell from the addressing, and their performance, which is very cultural in nature, very rich, and which has to be preserved for uh, both the current and future generation. And of course, we talk about current and future generation. This is the whole essence of sustainable development. Because sustainable development is about how can we be able to meet, to develop and meet the needs of the current generation without compromising the needs of the future generation. And so preserving this culture is very important for future generation because it tells us about people's roots. Where have people come from? How did they conduct themselves? What used to bring them together? And you realize that some of these uh, um, uh, groups that you're seeing here, they normally come together to, to, to sing during festivals as part of promoting peace, as part of promoting harmony, as part of promoting cultural diversity. And this is the whole, what, what the geopark concept is, is all about. As you can see here, yeah, in various attires, both local and non-local. And I think in this, in this one, of the, one of these photos, you can see 
perhaps a few of our, of our friends who are, who are being, uh, of course, um, enthroned, of course, being uh, uh, made uh, uh, Maasai warriors, and, 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 and you can even tell by the attire, the attire, which is part of appreciating culture. Because we say, we understand that in as much as um, each community has its own culture, cultural diversity allows people to be able to test and ha have a feel of other communities' culture. And this is all what the GEOPA concept is promoting here in Kenya, but of course, in the whole, uh, uh, the whole world. In terms of natural heritage, uh, with, with respect to flora and fauna, this is, this is one of the sites within the geopark, a, a, geo, a, geo, a geo site called Lake Bogoria, which is known of having the biggest proportion of the lesser flamingos in the world. So here you can see spectacular congregations, uh, sometimes uh, during certain times of the year, we, 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 we can even have more than 2 million birds just in one lake. Okay. And of course, we know that the, the, great, the, the, the lesser flamingo is a globally threatened species. So therefore means that also when you're looking at the geopark uh, concept, it's important in protecting some of these species that are globally threatened, such as the great, the, the lesser flamingo, so, uh, such as you know, you're looking at the white-backed vulture, which is also facing extinction in many parts of the world. You're looking at the greater kudu. You're looking at the baringo, baringo giraffe. You're also looking at the gray crown crane, which is also globally threatened. And so, it therefore, means that if you're able to look at the three pillars of the of the, of the geopark uh, concepts, which is conservation, development, and, and education. Conservation becomes very key here because by identifying sites where some of these species are found and uh, designating them either as a geopark or as a geosite, it means that we are putting these species um, in some form of conservation consideration, which perhaps if it had not been done, some of these species are likely to become extinct. Just to show how important this geo, the, the aspiring geopark is in terms of conservation, it has been recognized as a, as a world heritage site from a natural point of view. Some of them have been recognized as Ramsar sites. Some of them have been recognized as important bird areas. And of course, some of them are already designated as national reserves, as well as wildlife conservancies. Some of the species that are found, of course, within the Baringo landscape, you also likely to find elephants. You also likely to find very close forests with very close forest, forest canopies. This is one of the, the tree species, actually one of the tallest tree within the geopark. Perhaps we need to really go deeper and be able to perhaps with some kind of precision estimate the age and also estimate the height. We also have mosses. Mosses are normally a very good indicator of a, an environment that is not polluted. So meaning that uh, within the geopark, if you can be able to find some of these indicator species, it means that, uh, that the landscape is less polluted, is well, is well cared for uh, so that uh, to, uh, so because of the existence of this, some of these indicator species. Other species, of course, we're looking at uh, reptiles, you're looking at amphibians, you're looking at um, butter, insects, you're looking at fish, some of which are endemic to this, to this region. And therefore, conserving them through the geopark approach would be one way of securing the survival of some of these species, which if left uh, unprotected, Will, uh, will become extinct in the future. But of course also the, this concept uh, provides us an opportunity to look at how can we be able to manage 
disasters because disaster risk reduction is a very important element of the geopark concept. And within the geopark, of course, there have been some cases of, of flooding. There are some isolated cases of, of lands, landslides. So we are now looking at how can we then be able uh, to come up with strategies through the, con the, the geopark concept to be able to address some of these emerging, uh, current and emerging uh, uh, challenges such as disasters and, and, and risks. You can see this is flooding. Uh, some of these used to be, these used to be either forest, a uh, woodland. This used to be a gate, an entrance to, to a, a national, a national reserve. But it's now been submerged because of disasters. So therefore, when you're looking at uh, uh, geopark, the question now is how can we use this concept to be able to understand some of these emerging issues? How can we be able to come up with perhaps solutions, information, or even how can you be able to prevent those that are yet to occur, especially those that are within, those whose protection, whose prevention is within our capabilities. In terms of the progress made with the nomination, uh, I, I think, uh, as I said, this is an aspiring geopark which of course is very different from most of the presentations that have been made because most of the presentations that have been made have been made by people who are already managing a, a, a geopark that has already been formally recognized by, by UNESCO. In terms of, of what, where we are, of course, we now have the National Geopark Committee, which is driving, uh, providing the technical backstopping uh, on matters geopark in the country in terms of identification, in terms of uh, raising the visibility of this concept. So far, one geopark, as one aspiring geopark, which is the Baringo uh, aspiring geopark has been identified and plans are underway to submit the nomination, um, uh, nomina the nomination documents to UNESCO, uh, hopefully this year. We now have a, a five-year management plan that was developed and, 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 and validated by stakeholders. And so we are on track. Of course, we still have a, a few things that we need to address before uh, we can be able to submit this nomination document. And in terms of some of the additional milestone uh, is that, um, is that We've also tried to, to brand our, geo, geo, our geopark. We now have a logo. We now have uh, sites that have signage. And so making it easier for our visitors to know the respective geo, geo sites that perhaps they are visiting or want to visit. But I think more importantly is that uh, getting communities involved from the start is very important. and. Uh, this was the, actually the idea which we, we are helping uh, them to nurture and ensure that these dreams come true. But it's important in the process to continue, we would have continuous dialogue. Uh, there's continue, need to continue for, to continuous sensitization about this concept, given that it's a new concept in Africa. But there's also a need for communities to be involved in both planning and development of uh, aspiring uh, geoparks. So this is just show that uh, there's been a lot of stakeholder engagement from the beginning where we've had workshops, meetings, uh, brainstorming sessions with the communities to be able uh, to generate the information, to be able to understand the, the geo sites that um, they think because at the end of the day, it also has to, has to come from them. And I, believe, I, I remember in the beginning, we even had just a workshop where we gave the communities a chance to be able to identify what would be the potential geosites within the geopark. And they gave us a list of almost 100 geosites. Then we went through the process now of ground truthing, where we now had experts uh, from throughout the partnerships we, we had with UNESCO and uh, other NATCOMs who came and uh, were able to help us ground truths, 
uh, are based on a given criteria to be able to shortlist a few of the geosites. So currently out of around, around 100, we only have uh, about 15 geosites that we believe uh, that uh, really meet the criteria at the moment. But of course, identification of the geosite is normally a continuous process. And as time goes, we'll continue identifying additional geosites as long as they're able to meet the criteria as set by UNESCO. But of course, there have also been a very high level engagement of, of political leaders. And uh, I can't remember how many meetings we've had with the governor of, of, the, of the Baringo County as part of engaging him and uh, seeking political support. And uh, it means a lot because their commitment is very important in this process. There's no way you can proceed if there is no commitment on, from them. And they've been very supportive. This is just part of some of the site visits, or some of the sites, the geo sites that, that uh, we've been visiting as part of documenting uh, information, understanding, uh, interacting with the, with the local communities. But there's also been a lot of goodwill from other geoparks and geopark partners, uh, especially uh, from Lesbos in Greece, from our partners in Portugal through Professor Artur, from our partners in Sweden through uh, our colleague Kristin uh, and the Germany Natcom, the UK Natcom. So it means that there's a lot of goodwill and uh, there's a lot that you can learn from one another. There's a lot that you can exchange, but of course there's also a lot of uh, sharing of resources and expertise that uh, goes into this process if we have to get it right. And we are, it means that you're not starting from scratch. You can learn from our colleagues from other parts of the world, which is very important because one of the beauty about the GeoPark concept is all about networking. How can we be able to network and share experiences, share best practices, share challenges, and be able to come up with solutions to address those challenges? I can also now say that the community is now very aware, has a lot of awareness raising has been created to an extent that in this figure that we're in this uh, slide that you're seeing, these are children and their parents who are able to identify fossilized remains that were excavated during a road construction. And through the advocacy, this road construction had to, uh, to be brought to a halt because then it was discovered that uh, it was being constructed in an area that's rich in fossils. So meaning that if you, if you can have the community aware about the heritage that is within their landscape and they're able to appreciate this heritage, they will go to greater lengths to be able to protect this heritage. But of course, protecting them for now, for, for the current and future generation, but also seeing how can they also now be able to benefit from their actions of protecting and lobbying and advocating for their conservation. Some of the, also the milestones include the branding of the geopark. I think as I mentioned, we've done a lot of signages. We also done, we will now have a, a geopark website as part of creating visibility of the geopark. We also have brochures about the geopark that presents the, the, the geosites that have been identified with information that make ge those geosites unique. We also had uh, appearances in television and also in the local uh, both print and, 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 and non print media. So this is the website. I will I request you to visit it so that you can be able to learn more about the geopark. Some of the lessons learned, strategic partnerships of course are very key in providing the resources, both material and, 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 and in-kind support that uh, are needed during the process. 
Of course, another expect another lesson learned in the few years that you've been, uh, uh, of course, coordinating this process is that the very high expectations by stakeholders. And there's therefore need to see how do we try to work hard to be able to meet the expectations. Expectations in the context of a better environment, expectations in the context of in improved livelihoods, expectations in the context of generally sustainable development and people being able to benefit from this very important resource. There's always need to, for continuous capacity development and awareness raising is very important so that you are leaving no one behind. If you have to move with everyone, it means that we have to really uh, continuously develop capacity, continuously create the awareness among us, among the local populace, so that as many people as possible are aware about this concept, they are willing to provide their support, but of course, above all, they are willing to ensure that they conserve and protect this very important natural, cultural, and geological heritage. There's always need for resources, and bringing therefore more partners on board is very key. Of course, some of the opportunities that exist uh, is now how to look at, for example, how can we be able to come up with uh, a big program looking at the three pillars of the geopark education conservation and sustainable development and, and development how can we become able to come up with a multidisciplinary initiative that touches on education that touches on development that touches on the issues to do to do with conservation this may be in the form of a big project or a big program that for example brings together various stakeholders various actors how can we be able to address the issues of disasters, particularly given the, the flooding that has happened and perhaps some of the disasters that we hope are likely to happen in the future, how can we be able to come up with mitigation, mitigation measures? But other opportunities that exist are that um, UNESCO Global Geopark Network is a family and uh, it this concept provide opportunity to learn from one another. And I liked it because our colleagues from Morocco, our colleagues from Tanzania are in the house. We are looking at how can we be able to work together. We're looking at our colleagues from the West, our colleagues from the East, how can we be able to work together? And one thing about the Diopa concept is that people are willing to work together. People are willing to exchange ideas. People are willing to exchange expertise. People are willing to share resources because it's a family. And we are happy if in, in the long run, we are going to become part of this family, a very important geopark family. There's also needs to leverage on capacity in, in tour guiding, uh, capacity in branding of goods and services as, as produced sustainably from the geopark so that you're able to create a very special market niche for the local people so that they're able to benefit from agricultural products, they're able to benefit from, from the resources that they produce sustainably within the geopark. Another opportunity, of course, is that there's a huge catchment of educational institutions. And looking at one of the pillars, which is education, I think going forward, we're looking at how can we be able to tap into this rich catchment? How can we bring on board schools, colleges, universities, so that you're also able to create this geopark as a, a laboratory, a place, a class where students can be able to come and, and learn. Because that's the future generation we are creating. And we can only do that by telling them about processes that, are ha that happened, processes that are happening, and, process and even you know, trajectories of things that are likely to happen into the future. So our takeaway from this is that a geopark is, a new, of course, is a new concept, but it can promote local economies through geotourism. Geoparks have a well-established global network 
And as I said, it's a, 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 a global family. Geopax promotes sustainable development, protection of natural and cultural heritage, or the conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity and geological resources. But it can also provide opportunities to address challenges associated with disasters. Many international visitors now want to know about Geopax. And so that's why we are saying it puts us in a very good position to promote geotourism. Because as many people as possible would want to know what makes it a geopark? What makes, what is such a unique, what makes it so unique? And they will be willing to travel to come and see. So we are proud uh, to pursue this process because we see it as an opportunity for promoting uh, local economies. But of course, geoparks foster community-based sustainable regional economic development. And um, this is a model that is ideal and suited for the Great Rift Valley and Kenya in general. It also promotes use of geo resources, in, but in a more sustainable way. But of course, for us to be able to remain competitive in the global market, Kenya needs global geopark. We need a third geopark in Africa to be in Kenya because we know what it means. It also provides a source of employment. It fosters community, it fosters, uh, sorry, I think this is a repetition, I'm sorry for that. So perhaps my conclusion um, is that due to its outstanding geological and cultural heritage, Baringo aspiring geo, 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 Baringo Great Rift Valley is an ideal candidate for UNESCO Global Geopark designation. And once established, this has a potential to be a model geopark, not only for Kenya, but for the rest of Africa. And of course, we'd be happy to be part of the Africa UNESCO Global Geopark Network uh, team. It will also be a catalyst for sustainable development, a tool for peace promotion and community cohesion, an opportunity for global partnership, a potential for alternative livelihood opportunities for the local communities, and therefore, this designation will open the area for geotourism. Uh, it will open the area for partnerships. It will open the area for leveraging on uh, unique products that are produced within the geopark to benefit the local communities. And of course, promote opportunities for research, especially documenting uh, 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 geo, geo heritage, both flora, fauna, paleo, archaeo, that still needs to be documented. And we are calling upon this part, uh, we're calling upon our, uh, our friends and our partners to work with us to be able, be able to make this a reality. I think I would want to stop there for today. And I want to take this opportunity to really, really from the bottom of my heart, to thank Professor Arthur for giving me this opportunity to be able to share uh, uh, what we are doing here in Kenya. We hope we'll continue getting such forums to be able to talk and interact so that we're able to learn from one another. Thank you very much. Asante Sana, George. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. George uh, Eshiamwata. Uh, for your great and inspiring uh, presentation about the state of the heart uh, of uh, geoparks uh, in Kenya with special, uh, special focus on the Baringo Great Rift Valley uh, aspiring uh, UNESCO Global Geopark. I think that was uh, very illustrative and uh, <clears throat> you gave the, a, a, real, um, a real view about uh, the level of evolution and the steps already done and the, the, the way that need to be, uh, that you have in front of, of you. So thank you so much. Uh, if uh, someone uh, want to, to ask something to Dr. Shamuata, uh, please uh, take, uh, take the floor. We have here one question from Elizabeth Silva. Uh, she said, one question. Have you checked the 100 questions to see where you stand in your application form? 
this is important regarding your expectations. Thank you once more, and I wish you all the best in this ever important candidature. Can I answer that? Yes, please, George. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, a very good question. I think uh, what I can say is that we've done that. So, and that's a very important tool. The, the hundred questions is a very important tool and checklist because then it tells you where you are, what where gaps are, and uh, we've done that. And uh, so far, I can say we are happy with the progress that uh, that we are, we are making. Of course, a few gaps here and there that we hope we can be able to address before submitting our nomination. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, you. You have a lot, a lot of uh, congratulations in the chat uh, from uh, those that are attending uh, to the uh, to the course. And uh, um, I, I if, uh, for sure that someone that uh, want to ask you uh, many other questions can uh, send you an email uh, or or contact you by by the chat. Uh, Okay, uh, so the Dries uh, Ashwal uh, have a question. Not a question, uh, Arthur. I'm happy to uh, to see what they developed in uh, in Baringo in uh, Nairobi. We are open to to help and to share our twenty years of experience in Mugun Geopark, and you are welcome in the African UNESCO Global Geopark Network with our colleague, uh, Dr. Khatebo and Joshua in Tanzania to work together to, to, to have a, a strong uh, candidature to be a member of uh, the big family of Global Geopark Network uh, in uh, two next year. I, I think, why not in, uh, in 2023 in Marrakesh in Morocco uh, next year? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, very much. Thank you. Uh, Dries, uh, uh, th there are some things that um, need to be uh, clarified that uh, my presence and the presence of uh, Christine Wrangness uh, in Baringo was uh, on the scope of the uh, UNESCO grant for uh, the development of uh, geoparks in African and Arabian countries. So we were there. Uh, was not a private invitation from uh, our colleagues from uh, from Ke Kenya, but was a decision for from UNESCO that nominated us both to go there and to share some uh, of the experiences uh, with them. So it was very recently, it was uh, one month ago. Um, and uh, during this time, we had the opportunity to to see uh, the the state of the art uh, and to 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 share and give advice in several uh, several questions. So uh, was on this scope was uh, was nothing that uh, could uh, could put in question, uh, of course, the importance uh, of the uh, African uh, <clears throat> UNESCO Global Geoparks Network that are those that have the first link with those that are developing uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks projects in Africa. Thank you so much, uh, George. Asante Sena uh, was, uh, was a real pleasure and honor to have you uh, with us. Uh, and now it's time to go to the the next uh, keynote. Uh, so uh, it will be presented by um, Elena Medeiros uh, from the Lanzarote and Archipelago Chinijo, uh, UNESCO Global Geopark in Spain. Elena Medeiros, uh, she is a geologist uh, and she is the manager of uh, the Lanzarote and Chinijo Island UNESCO Global Geoparks in the Canary Canary Islands in Spain, uh, and uh, she is also member of the uh, advisory committee of the European Geoparks Network. 
she's a person uh, with uh, large, already a large experience uh, in geopart, especially uh, in the um, <coughs> in pro projects of cooperation, projects of networking, uh, and is uh, probably for sure one of the persons in the geoparks that have the biggest art. She's a, a person that loves geoparks and all those that knows Elena loves her. So Elena, thank you so much uh, for accepting uh, our invitation. And uh, uh, it's a pleasure to us and an honor to us to have you talking about Lanzarote and Archipelago Chinijo, UNESCO Global Geoparks, challenges of an insular territory. So Elena, the Sorry. floor is yours. I am fighting with uh, my presentation. <laughs> fighting, <okay>. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. Can you see the presentation? Yes, Elena. Okay. Yes, yes, it's perfect. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Arthur, for the invitation. I feel now very small <laughs> after the presentation of uh, that magnificent presentation. Uh, we are also in Africa, but uh, uh, geographical in Africa, but uh, we are in, a, in another network. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I am going to um, close my camera for more cover tour, okay? okay. So uh, first of all, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as I have to say, my name is Elena Mateo, no Mederos. <laughs> Elena Mateo. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Don't worry, Mateo Mederos. We, we have in Spain two last names. Yes. Uh, but, but it's the same, it's okay. Uh, and like I have to say, I am, I am the geologist of Lanzarote and Chinijo Island, UNESCO Global Geopark in Spain. It's in, Can in Canary Island, close to Africa. Uh, today, I am going to talk about the challenges of an insular territory. But as you can see, or you can imagine, uh, this is a broad perspective. So uh, I will focus on a project carried out from the geopark where I work uh, related to underwater geosite. I hope you like it. Um, the, you can see the different uh, slide, Arthur? Uh, yeah. Different uh, slide, yes. Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you where my geopark is located. Uh, Lanzarote and Chinijo Island is one of the 15 uh, geoparks in Spain uh, nowadays, and also is the second in, in Canary Island. The other, the, the other one is El, El Hierro, okay? One of our characteristics from a geographical point of view is our great proximity to Africa, African continent, which greatly influence, uh, influences our crime, climate, having a sub arid type component. Okay. Um, okay. This uh, figure, you can see the limits of, uh, in this figure, you can see the limits of our geopark. And as you can see, is there is a large part of water and the water territory with a great geological well. Of a total of 2,000 kilometers, uh, uh, two, sorry, 2,500 square kilometers, about 1,600 square kilometers are under the sea. Okay? But let me ask this question uh, How important is the sea for the geopark? It's very important, yes and first, first uh, stage for the fishery resources. Uh, although in the last decades, uh, and due to the different agreement, the fish in Lanzarote has decreased uh, consider considerably. It's an important economic resource uh, for, for our geopark. Or more, is a uh, very important as a tourist resource not only because of the tourism that visit us to enjoy the sun and beach, but also of the practice of water sports, which uh, is possible almost all year around. 
okay? But, 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 we can consider that the ocean that surround us is very important, yes. The most important because it is the source from which drink, we drink the entire population of Lanzarote, thanks to the desalination of seawater. It's an anecdote uh, mentioned that this, in the 70s, Lanzarote had the first desalination plant in Europe, which allowed, among other things, the development of the tourism sector. So the answer to the previous question is that the ocean is very important for the geopark, and not only because all, are, all we said is, all, is also important uh, because the geodiversity it contains. So we are talking about the, our geodiversity uh, under the sea. Thanks to the preparation of the application as a geopark, uh, work was carried out on the elaboration of a detailed inventory of terrestrial geosite. And for the first time, I have to say, those found under the water were taken into consideration because there are many geological treasures, which in many cases are visited by divers who don't know their value. The identification of underwater geological heritage is crucial for the development of underwater geotourism. So in the year 2014, was signed an agreement between the Geopark and the Spanish Geological Service to carry out an inventory of terrestrial and marine geosites. This study contributes to the knowledge of the submarine geology of Lanzarote and Chinijo Island, UNESCO Global Geopark, using, for example, direct methods and indirect. This is the map of the work carried out, a map of the distribution of our geosite under the sea. You can see it's a very share. Years later, after this uh, inventory, uh, after solving many technical problems, we undertook for the first time the monitoring of the conservation status <clears throat> of these marine geosites. Okay? To do this, a group of experts was involved in conducting dives in the waters of the geopark. Once the immersion has have been carried out, there were two tasks to do. First, filling a file, as you can see in this uh, slide, on this picture, that include various parameters to take into account, such the existence of garbage, uh, panels, natural or man-made damage, over-exploitation, etc. Also included the conservation status of flora and fauna. So we can check if there are problems also with the bio biodiversity. And another very important one is obtain photographic, the second uh, task was obtain uh, photographic resources for various work of dissemination and conservation of our seabed for the geopark uh, staff. Uh, uh, important uh, graphic resources for, for our, our dial work. There it worked. Okay, so let me show you some examples of these uh, uh, geosites. Okay, the first of all, we can see Puerto Viejo, it's all, all port, all of Hadur. It's in Alegranza Islet, it's a small island, uh, the, the northern in the Canary Island. Uh, in this geosite, it's possible to see sedimentary structures. Maybe in this one, sedimentary, like you can see at the, at, at the bottom, as parallel stratification and cross bedding, bombs, lithic fragments, impact pits, and other features. Typical from this type of erosion uh, with magma water interaction, and you can observe this uh, interaction. Okay. On the other hand, hydromagmatic pyroclastic deposits have been eroded, displaying mushroom shapes, interesting mushroom shapes. Typical from literal environments. It is another picture of uh, this uh, geosite. Another geosite is El Rio. El Rio is the river 
but in this case, it's not a real, a real river. It's a, a piece of a sea, a, a sea between two, two points of uh, land. And it's like a river, but it's a, a salty water, okay? Um, this, uh, this is a mushroom uh, feature that, like I said before, this uh, is a sedimentary deposits are per perpendicular to the present sea circulation. These rocky outcrops rise about five meters from the sandy bottom, like you can see. A, a great diversity of literal erosive geoform, like columns, arch, bridge, taponi, mushroom shape, suggests that the sandy bar was exposed to a literal environmental. Scuba diving is spectacular here due, due to the combination between uh, GEA and life, like you can see the, that kind of uh, amount of, of fishing. This is another kind of mushroom uh, shape in the same place in, in Montaña Clara. And another one is Las Gerardias, okay? Las Gerardias, uh, in this uh, geosite, we can see dikes, uh, subvertical and forms walls of great development that constitute inverted reliefs modeled by erosion of the hydromagmatic pyroclastic, in which there are, there were intruded. The orientation of these walls with respect to the sun generate shady areas which along with the productivity of the water and the opening to the dominant currents make this rocky structure an ideal habitat to host a community of corals that are usually found at greater depth is called Herardia sabaglia. It's a, like I said, it's a, a, a coral, you can see in the imagine, that uh, because of the conditions of a shallow, you can, uh, so, sorry, uh, lack of, uh, lack of uh, sun, uh, it develop uh, in, in shallow water. It's no, no normal, okay? You can see aquí here the gerardias, um, many uh, kind of uh, fishes, more. And this is a very interesting geosite. It's uh, the Roque del Este, it's the mo smallest, almost the smallest, um, Islet, islet in the in the archipel in the Chinijo Islands. Sorry, uh, is the north northeasternmost territory in all Canary Islands, and is deeply eroded hydromagmatic volcanic. Okay, uh, in such a way that this show its internal structure, in, including some feeder dikes that you can see. Is not uh, the submarine part, but you can see now the submarine part. Okay. Remember this uh, these pictures. Okay. Uh, it's a uh, now this tunnel. Indeed, uh, thanks of the dikes, uh, the, the dikes constitutes a wall of another underwater tunnel about one hundred meters long that completely cross the islet. It means that this uh, tunnel, where is the, uh, is the, main, the main diving, uh, cross, is a tunnel that cross all the island. It's sedimentary, no, no volcanic tunnel. The basaltic dive is more resistant to er the erosion than the soft pyroclastic. So the volcanic deposit have been eroded, giving place to the formation of that tunnel. Okay, it's very interesting. The main, also another interest for, not only for this uh, uh, geof geomorphic uh, land, is uh, the uh, interest of the life inside, because it's a very special place, okay? Now we are talking about Puerto de Moro. Uh, is a representative example of literal eros uh, erosive geoform, typical of low rocky cliff carpet on basaltic lava flows of AA type. These flows are usually formed by two uh, breakage levels located at the top and at, at the base. 
So uh, uh, in between, there is a massive the central area with columnar joints. So the waves eroded, the base and the lava is obvious, it's soft. And the central part is uh, not eroded and uh, undermine it, causing the collapse of the upper parts. In this case, marine erosion has formed an elongated littoral cave that you can see in these uh, pictures, okay? Okay, this is the, the entrance to the caves. And as you can see, the, the same uh, the, the same geosite, okay? This is Puerto del Carmen. I, many people that uh, have been in Lanzarote, I think they, they can remember Puerto del Carmen. It's the uh, littoral, it's the one of the main touristic areas in Lanzarote and also has a very, very, very beautiful uh, and nice uh, diving. The submarine area is forming here by a marine platform developed on submerged subaerial lavas, where the coastal erosion, where the sea level was lower, modeled the lava flows giving rise to a great diversity of geoforms that are frequently visited by divers. Ironically, <laughs> include large underwater caves, erosive tubes, and mushroom shaped monolith. You can see the pictures of this area is close to the close to, to the hotels and the resorts and so on. This is another mushroom uh, shape that are very common in this area. And we are going to visit the treasures of the crown, the Atlantic Tunnel. This is a real, real uh, magical place for our geopark. It's, a, it's difficult, I think, uh, it's difficult to imagine uh, how is the Atlantic Tunnel. I don't know if you better, okay. If you realize there's something with the, somebody with the microphone open. I don't know who, don't worry. Uh, tunnel of Atlantida, the Atlantida Tunnel is the last um, part of uh, uh, another lava tube uh, called La Corona, uh, La, La Corona at, uh, uh, Lava Tube, okay? Uh, about 20,000 years ago, when the sea level was almost 100 meters below the current level, a uh, last glacier stage, the lava, La, La Corona lava, uh, La, per, sorry, La Corona volcano erupted. Uh, during this eruption, a large amount of very fluid lava flow was emitted in a large volcanic tube of more than 7.8 kilometers in length. 1.7 kilometers are submerged uh, with several subtubes at different levels and diameters, if, as you can see. Okay. This is a, a part of the, the lava, the lava tube. And I don't know if you realize that uh, the future that you can see in this picture is the same like you see in the lava tubes without water. Why? Well, uh, the scientists uh, thought that the, this lava tube uh, form when there are not water inside. You can see the drops, uh, these kind of uh, drops are uh, in the water, are submerged. So it's very interesting to study this uh, lava tube uh, for um, uh, climate. Um, okay, for example, see, uh, there are another feature uh, that is very interesting is a uh, Sun um, mountain of sun is a, a, a small mountain of sun of uh, about uh, 20 meters of height, formed by the uh, entry of sediments into the submerged part. The caves also and carbonate precipitates such as cal cal calcite and sulfates such as yeast. This is 
some kind of uh, photos of uh, the expedition. Another, uh, you can see also sand and um, precipitates. It's very interesting. Uh, the main interested in this geosite, sorry, the main the main interesting in this geosite is uh, volcanic, volcanological. Sorry. Also, this also uh, has an important geomorphological and paleoclimatic implication, like I said before. Due to the fragility of the fauna and the structures found in the tube, it was declared a site of scientific interest. And the access is limited uh, to scientific expedition. Uh, let me say that uh, the, the staff of the Geopark have been very um, many uh, efforts to take photos and material because this uh, part of the Geopark is impossible, it's not access for the rest of the population. Only uh, the people who practice uh, speleo, buceo, speleo diving, that is a very dangerous uh, activity, can access and, and only for uh, scientific re reasons. So we, from the Geopark, we, we work a lot for uh, the diff diffusion of uh, dissemination of the, the values of this uh, tunnel. So finally, uh, my conclusions, well, the ocean is very important to the development of the Geopark from many points of view. Like I said before, economic, natural, cultural, etc. And uh, with the complete monitoring of the state of conservation of the geosite, uh, as I said before, we also guarantee uh, the conservation of marine biodiversity. The Geopark requires a strategy that, determine, that determines which geosite can become must without compromising the state of conservation. Uh, and that's all. That's all. I hope you will like it. Oh yes, Elena. <laughs> we like it so so much. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for this uh, great uh, presentation. Uh, that is perfectly in accordance uh, with the main motto of this uh, in intensive course. Uh, we have here uh, a question uh, from uh, Lachmiri Sukaina. Uh, very impressive to identify underwater geosites. Do you already conduct geo trails to any of these geosites for geoeducation purposes for young people? Not, all, not in special for young people. We are uh, promoting uh, this activity uh, not in the water. We are uh, doing, for example, exhib exhibitions and, and filming about this, uh, this, uh, this activity. Um, let me say that we are uh, beginning with these uh, activities because it's very difficult to manage because you have to pay a lot for securities. Mm -hmm. Seguro. Yes. You have to pay a lot for insurance. Uh, for, in, for insurance. insurance, yes. For organized uh, every every activity under the water. But we are in it, on it. Okay. So, uh, Elena, thank you so much. Uh, mm -hmm. Sorry, we don't have more time for questions because we are already a little bit delayed in the program. But uh, I, I would like to thank you once again uh, for accepting our uh, invitation. It was very, very important, uh, your presentation, your sharing about the, the reality of uh, Lanzarote and Archipelago of Chinijo Island uh, in Canarian Island in Spain. Thank you. Thank you so much, Elena. Thank you, uh, Arthur, and good luck yeah. for the, the yeah. this seminary. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 And uh, the, the next, uh, the. Ils sont en train de proposer dans cet article. Ils sont en train de proposer certaines stratégies nationales pour pouvoir éliminer, pour pouvoir donner du poids au secteur de l'aquaculture qui souffre, 
Pourquoi Parce que beaucoup d'efforts ont été fournis en matière de la gestion en matière euh, de, 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 des Sorry for this small uh, issue, <laughs> problem uh, with the sound of one of the participants. And uh, now uh, it is time to invite the next uh, speaker uh, for the next keynote. Uh, it will be uh, Mrs. Constantina Bentana. Uh, she is uh, the executive assistant of the Global Geoparks Network Secretariat. Uh, she is responsible uh, for um, the development of educational programs in the Lesbos Island UNESCO Global Geoparks in Greece. Uh, she has uh, recognized great uh, experience in uh, geoparks uh, and since long time uh, she is one of the persons that uh, uh, is behind uh, the intensive course, the GGN intensive course in the Lesbos Island. So, uh, but today uh, we asked her uh, to uh, bring uh, something very interesting uh, that is developed uh, uh, in the, the Lesbos Island uh, UNESCO uh, Global uh, Geopark. Um, and uh, um, she will share with us um, a keynote uh, uh, titled Women Cooperatives and Handicraft in Lesbos Island UNESCO Global Geoparks. So let's see how an insular UNESCO Global Geopark deal with the questions uh, related, uh, especially with the SDG 5 gender equality. Dear Constantina, thank you, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. It's an honor to have you uh, with us. It's a real pleasure. Thank you, and uh, the floor is yours. Uh, dear Arthur, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, it's a great pleasure and uh, privilege for me to talk to this uh, summer university. And uh, I want to congratulate you for all your great work and uh, the excellent organization of uh, this summer uh, university. Uh, as uh, you already mentioned uh, during uh, my presentation, I, uh, I will share our experience about uh, the women cooperatives and uh, hand, uh, handcrafts in uh, Lesbos Island UNESCO Global uh, Geopark. But uh, before presenting uh, our experience, I would like to mention, to mention the special relationship between women and UNESCO Global Geoparks. Uh, one of the 10 focus areas of UNESCO Global Geoparks uh, is dedicated to women and uh, especially uh, UNESCO Global Geoparks are working in order to empower uh, women either through educational programs or through the development of uh, women cooperatives. Uh, geoparks are uh, platforms for uh, development and promotion of local products, uh, local uh, uh, cottage industry, uh, but also craft uh, products. Uh, Lesbos Geopark uh, works uh, towards uh, this focus area uh, for the empire in uh, empowerment of uh, women uh, for promoting their local products, uh, but also is working uh, for the sustainable uh, use of uh, local resources from land and from uh, sea and the sustainable local development of uh, rural areas. Uh, at this point, I would like to introduce you um, uh, our uh, geopark. Uh, Lesbos Island UNESCO Global Geopark is uh, located in the North Aegean Sea and it is uh, the third largest island in Greece. Uh, the entire island uh, has been uh, recognized as a UNESCO Global Geopark. Uh, it is a founding member of the uh, European uh, Geoparks uh, Network since 2000 and in 2012 
uh, the geopark was enlarged from former uh, Lesbos Petrified Forest uh, Geopark. Uh, our territory has a uh, low density of population, uh, but also high degree of aging, uh, especially in uh, rural areas. And um, in these uh, areas, uh, women are um, mostly unemployed uh, with uh, less support and less uh, opportunities. Uh, this is uh, the geological uh, map of uh, Lesbos uh, Geopark. Uh, our island is uh, characterized uh, by a unique uh, geological heritage, and it was uh, subjected to a variety of geological processes uh, that uh, have been uh, resulted in a high geodiversity. Uh, at uh, the western uh, Lesbos, uh, dominated the petrified uh, forest. Uh, which has been uh, designated by the Greek state as a natural monument. And uh, its, cre its uh, creation is a result of uh, volcanic activity uh, about uh, 20, 18 million years ago. Uh, impressive geosites also dominate uh, uh, to other parts of the island, actually at every corner of uh, Lesbos uh, Geopark, like volcanoes, hot springs, uh, waterfalls, uh, um, coastal landforms, uh, which, are, uh, which constitute uh, evidence of uh, the history of the Aegean Sea over the last uh, 300 million years. Uh, due to its uh, rich uh, geological heritage, uh, Lesbos is also displays uh, a rich uh, biodiversity, and the island is uh, described as a uh, botanical paradise. Uh, it displays uh, numerous types of ecosystems, and uh, it is impressive the correlation between our geological history and uh, the type of rocks uh, with the types of uh, vegetation. Uh, the richness and quality of uh, uh, the products uh, of the island over the centuries uh, have um, created a gastronomical culture uh, with a unique taste. Uh, these characteristics of the island, uh, its geological, uh, natural uh, heritage, uh, have been utilized by the women cooperatives, uh, giving them the raw material that they need uh, for the preparation of quality local products and handcrafts. And uh, uh, what are the women agrotouristic uh, agro cooperatives in Greece? Uh, they are initiatives of cooperation of women in rural areas uh, that work for their uh, mutual social, economic, and uh, cultural benefit uh, through a mutually owned and, democratic, and democratically run um, enterprise. Uh, all, uh, all of the women cooperatives have been established in rural areas. And what means this? Uh, this means in areas where women uh, more um, frequently adopt traditional gender uh, roles uh, in terms of uh, family care and household uh, responsibilities. Uh, the women cooperatives uh, also based on values like uh, self-help, uh, democracy, uh, equality and uh, solidarity. Uh, these values, amongst other uh, aspects of cooperatives, are uh, particularly useful in empowering women uh, uh, through membership. Uh, in Lesbos, uh, the history of the agrotourism cooperatives dates back in uh, 1983, uh, when the first agrotourism cooperative established in the area of Petra. Uh, today, there are uh, 10 uh, cooperatives in different rural areas all around the island. All of these uh, cooperatives are productive one, and especially uh, the women use local uh, agricultural uh, raw materials that process them into local products, uh, like pasta, sweet, uh, jams. Uh, uh, they produce handcrafts and items of uh, folk art, 
Uh, they deal with the collection, drying and trade of aromatic plants and herbs, and, uh, but also some uh, cooperatives uh, offer also accommodation. Uh, but uh, what Lesbos uh, UNESCO Global Deer Park is doing in order to promote and support uh, the women cooperatives? Uh, let me show you some uh, examples. Uh, one of our main activity is uh, the Agrotourism uh, Festival. Uh, the festival is organized by the Museum uh, of the Geopark since 2000, and it is held from July to September every year. Uh, its main target is uh, to present uh, all the women cooperatives and their traditional products. Uh, during the Agrotourism Festival, the Geopark organized special uh, tasting event. Uh, each event is dedicated to different women cooperatives and uh, different traditional products. Uh, this event gives the opportunity to women to present their products and uh, their activities. Uh, it is important to say that um, uh, women during these events are also cooking and discussing with uh, the participants. And uh, in this way, they have the opportunity to inspire them on how to use uh, seasonal products and uh, uh, ingredients. Uh, also, during this activity, Lesbos Geopark promotes uh, the local products and uh, presents uh, the women cooperatives, but also uh, we use uh, this opportunity in order to inform participants uh, uh, for sustainable consumption patterns and uh, protection of uh, the biodiversity. Uh, in order to promote uh, the products of women cooperatives, uh, Lesbos Geopark also organizes uh, uh, various cultural events like uh, traditional music, dancing, and uh, various other events. And um, we all enjoy to participate to this cultural event, but also have tasting of uh, traditional products of uh, women. Uh, the Geopark also prepares every year special promotional uh, publication and leaflets, uh, which are distributed uh, online or in printed format. And uh, not only we distribute them, uh, not only in Lesbos, but also all around Greece and abroad. Uh, we also, we also uh, present uh, the women cooperatives and uh, their activities and uh, all of the activities uh, that we are organizing and events uh, through, our, uh, through the Geopark website. And uh, we also organize special uh, media campaign uh, all around the year. Uh, the museum has also created uh, the taste boxes, which include the local products uh, of all the women cooperatives. Uh, each uh, box contains uh, different products uh, from different women cooperatives. And in this way, through one box, uh, uh, one can find uh, uh, products for uh, more than one uh, cooperative. Uh, sustainable consumption and sustainable production is uh, one of the uh, uh, the activities that uh, we also implement with children. Uh, through this educational program, we visit, a woman, uh, we visit one woman cooperative and the children participate in experiential activities like cooking, uh, but also tasting activities. Uh, for us, uh, this is one of the best educational activities, working with the children uh, for uh, responsible uh, consumption and uh, uh, sustainable use of local uh, resources. Uh, of course, activities, products, and handcrafts, uh, and handcrafts uh, connected uh, always uh, with the sea. Um, and always presented uh, in our geopark. Uh, for example, in the museum, we organized uh, exhibitions with handcrafts 
uh, that have been uh, created from uh, various materials from the sea or the beaches arising in this way the importance of uh, protecting the sea life. Uh, our next activity is also connected with uh, the sea and water. And um, for example, uh, last summer, uh, Les was Geopark in collaboration with the Mesotopos Women Association uh, organized an event for the importance of uh, the wetlands of the Geopark, uh, the problems that uh, they are facing, and uh, the importance of uh, sustainable use of uh, their resources. Uh, Activities like that are uh, organized uh, in the Geopark uh, during the last two years, all around our Geopark. And uh, these are uh, some activities uh, we implement in Lesbos uh, Geopark uh, for the empowerment of and support of uh, women cooperatives and uh, the promotion of uh, their local products and uh, handcrafts. And um, what we have seen until now, uh, we have seen that women cooperatives are, uh, as we expected, a very important economic, uh, uh, social and cultural part of uh, Lesbos Geopark and uh, play um, a very important role uh, to the local development of the Geopark. Uh, women uh, benefit from uh, the activities of uh, Lesbos Geopark and um, uh, due to the activities of the Geopark, they have the opportunity uh, to achieve um, uh, more promotion and uh, to bring to them uh, uh, children, various um, uh, types of uh, participants uh, and uh, uh, also to promote uh, their products uh, uh, in areas that uh, maybe it was not uh, easy for them to promote, like abroad or other areas in, um, in Greece. Um, also, it is important that uh, women uh, through these activities are um, empowered and uh, uh, have uh, many benefits uh, uh, and um, uh, another important issue is that uh, the women cooperatives in Lesbos uh, have um, created the, continuous, uh, the, the conditions uh, in order to keep young people and especially young women in uh, rural areas uh, we talk at the beginning that we have low population and, and aging problem, but uh, women cooperatives uh, have uh, achieved in order to keep uh, young women in uh, rural areas and um, uh, also have created for them uh, new opportunities uh, for uh, the future. And I would like to close this presentation with uh, this image of a small girl uh, who participated in uh, one of our testing uh, events. Uh, she's tasting uh, sweets from a, a woman uh, agricultural uh, cooperative. And you can see how happy she is tasting the sweets of uh, the woman cooperatives. And uh, with this uh, beautiful picture, I would like to thank you very much uh, for your attention. And uh, I would like to thank you very much, uh, Professor Arthur Sa, uh, for uh, giving us the opportunity to share with you the experience of Lesbos uh, Island UNESCO Global Geopark about uh, women cooperatives. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Constantina. Uh, was so uh, so beautiful your presentation. I, for sure, that all the people are in this moment uh, wishing to go to Lesbos at least to try to do some pulki for to to taste at the end <laughs> in different and to keep with this beautiful smile like the the young girl that you use the picture in the in the end of the presentation. Thank you, thank you so much. It was so beautiful and so important. For sure, there are a lot of people that, uh, <laughs> yes, like like said, Meranjin uh, um, Jambi from from India, inspiring presentation. 
uh, in fact, uh, was very, very uh, beautiful uh, and, uh, and inspiring. And uh, well, uh, all, all, all we uh, know very well in the history of the geoparks that Lesbos uh, is the home of the women cooperative. So this idea brought as example of good practices from uh, the Lesbos Island UNESCO Global Geopark. And today uh, is a, um, a very good example that with some uh, adaptations in accordance with the realities of each, of each country, of each region, um, today is followed uh, for many, uh, many other uh, geoparks. So, you can see in the in the chat that a lot of people congratulating uh, you. Uh, I don't know if someone uh, wants to uh, make uh, one question to Miss Constantina Ventana. Well, in any case, uh, you always can send her uh, today or tomorrow uh, by chat or by email. Uh, a question that for sure she will be very happy to to answer you thank you thank you so much uh, for sharing so beautiful um, experience uh, with us it was really uh, really fantastic and inspiring uh, thank you so much for accepting our invitation once more uh, and uh, uh, for sure that you will be uh, with us in the remaining course thank you Thank you very much, Arthur. And uh, now uh, it's time to uh, for the next uh, keynote. Uh, it, is, it will be uh, presented by Professor uh, Alexandru uh, Andrasanu. Uh, professor uh, Alexandru Andrasanu is professor of the University of Bucharest in, in Romania. Um, he is also the director of the HATEC. UNESCO Global Geopark, also in Romania, uh, member uh, of the UNESCO Global Geoparks uh, Council uh, and a senior evaluator of the roster of evaluators uh, of geoparks. He is also a recognized authority uh, in geoparks. So dear professor, dear friend, uh, it's a pleasure uh, to have you with us uh, and today, uh, you will talk about something uh, very interesting. It's about young ambassadors as key actors for a geoeducation in the high-tech country, UNESCO Global Geopark. Thank you for uh, uh, your presence and the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Professor Arthur Saint, dear Arthur. Congratulations for your, uh, for this uh, excellent summer university. It's the sixth uh, time and um, a lot of work behind from your side and your colleagues and from everybody supporting this uh, summer university it's a great opportunity to share our experiences and to see other experiences so thank you very much for inviting me to share to share uh, our experience from Hatzeg and to share the experience um, of this kind of uh, activity which is related to involvement of the young uh, uh, people from our territory. I hope you see the, the screen. Yes. yes, in very good condition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, so I, am, I, am, I, I have invited my colleague, uh, Christian Chobano, to prepare this presentation. Perfect. He is the person in charge uh, with the program of uh, young volunteers, volunteer, job or volunteers and um, we are presenting this uh, here so uh, I'll, I'll tell you a few words about um, our geopark in romania in europe uh, then a few ideas about our geoeducation aims or aim uh, then a uh, few words about the geopark volunteers program the geopark ambassadors as you mentioned the geopark ambassadors are young volunteers trained to become ambassadors. We can say they are the best volunteers, but usually we don't say that because, because we want to encourage everybody to be the best person. Uh, but we have sometimes we have to, to select the, the best one to represent the, the geopark and the, the territory. Then I'll present you some activities and of course, 
conclusions. Um, our geopark is located in Europe, eastern part of southeastern part of uh, Europe, in uh, southwestern part of Romania. As you can see, we have the map of European Geoparks Network, and uh, we have two UNESCO Global Geoparks in Romania now since this year, and Hatze country is in the, in the southwestern part of Romania. It's um, around 1,100 square kilometers. There are around 86 villages, 35,000 inhabitants, and uh, the geopark was developed and is managed by the University of Bucharest in uh, local uh, and regional partnerships. We try different management uh, ideas, uh, but this one um, uh, was the, let's say, the, the most suitable in the political and social context of Romania. So having the university as a manager of the UNESCO designation, you suppose uh, that uh, we have a lot of uh, scientific research, a lot of field application, multidisciplinary research programs, in order to identify uh, the, the, the local assets. And also the Hatsik Geopark, which was the first in Romania, is member of the GGN since 2005, became a model for other territories in Romania. So a uh, 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 few, few ideas, few words about the, the local assets. Uh, we have a earth history of around 600 million years. It are the Carpathian mountains. It's a rural area and local identity was inhabited since, uh, let's say, more than 30,000 years ago. It's uh, uh, what used to be a, a combination of agriculture and a small industry, but now it's, it's more farming and tourism has a high biodiversity, more than, uh, let's say for butterflies, 145 uh, uh, species of butterflies. And the key geological elements are the dwarf dinosaurs, which are key elements in the geoeducation. We are uh, using the, the story of dwarf dinosaurs of Transylvania to develop different uh, educational programs and uh, touristical activities and of course, public awareness. You have here some reconstructions, some pictures of dinosaur eggs and bones, uh, and some reconstructions of the, the, the dinosaurs, but also um, flying reptiles, turtles. Uh, there are also other species of uh, different kinds of animals. So we can have a, a quite, we, we have now a quite a good idea about the, Upper Cretaceous ecosystem 72 million years ago. It's a complex territory, has an outstanding uh, 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 geological, biological, and cultural heritage. It's a rural area trying to overpass the post communist area and to develop tourism and farming now. So when we started the project in 2000, we developed partnerships, cooperation, a lot of research projects that we use in education. Also, we focused on interpretation and public awareness in order to create a good framework to foster economical and social development. Uh, when we talk about uh, geo-education, we are thinking about, uh, 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 about uh, partnership, multidisciplinary research, interpretation, and how to, to use all these to transform the local community. As you see in the left side, there are keywords about local community. Local community is a concept, and there are a lot of definitions, but anyway, uh, in in the, the 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 mind of people in their image about their territory, territory there are a lot of things connected to heritage history culture local identity um, different uh, activities and using geo education we are trying 
to create a job part community. So to add, let's say the keyword, the existing keywords of the community, new keywords related to geodiversity, related to UNESCO, related to, to geopark activities, to earth history and so on and so on, and how to put all together to create a brand and a touristical des destination. So in this uh, approach, uh, we can, uh, we are uh, developing the uh, projects and activities at different levels. So let's say at the academic level, because we are working, the university is managing the territory, we have uh, different kind, kind of projects. At the pre-university level, we are working a lot with, with local school and uh, local association. And also we focused on informal education and uh, developing uh, volunteers and uh, ambassadors project. Also the visiting infrastructure and the events and all the exhibitions and, and other activities are trying to promote, to interpret and to present to local communities and to, to tourists uh, the, the local assets, the geological one, the cultural one and the natural one, but especially the connection between local geodiversity and local identity. So talking about formal education at the, let's say, in, uh, undergraduate level, we develop different um, courses, uh, uh, part of the local curriculum. At the university level, we have a special uh, master degree, which is preparing specialists in uh, geoconservation and geoparks. Some of our graduate students are managing other geoparks or are wor working with us in Hatsek area. Coming back to so, or going to informal education, there are a lot of acti activities. Um, so we started with schools. Uh, the schools are the gates to enter a territory and the educational activities developed in schools and uh, in partnership with teachers are very important to, to pass the message, but also to understand the local community and to become a partner of local community. So in order to, to, to formalize this, we created the so-called EduJo Park um, network. All the, the local job, the, the local schools are part of this EduJo Park, and we are developing different kinds of activities, starting with field trips, conferences, and uh, other kinds of trainings. And, uh, and developing uh, different uh, activities for different ages. Uh, so every school has a, a, a club, or a geo club of kids working in partnership with us. But also every school is, uh, is our partner in different educational projects. Also talking about informal education, there are a lot of activities from let's say in community projects to events or to international exhibition exchanges and so on. These pictures are, are showing uh, diff, uh, uh, such kind of, of exchanges. And this one, it's, a, it's an exchange with a South Korean, a new South Korean job park. They visited our territory um, two years ago. And we were very proud to, to, to receive them and to, start to, to have cooperation. Also, we are developing um, different kind of uh, publications, um, game boards. Um, we are, we um, published the, re the results of our research and so on. So let's say we created the, the framework to develop uh, activities in order to uh, build bridges between us and schools and local communities and local associations. But we realized that we need more. And uh, in 2013, uh, we started a project which is called Volunteers for Geoparks. It's the idea to have, we have uh, geo clubs in, in every school, but was the need to, to have the young people from the 14, 15 years old 
up to 25 to be to be with us to be our partners and to develop together projects but more than that to to involve them to empower them uh, and to make them to understand what we are doing and to share with them uh, our uh, objectives so imagine from 2013 up to now we enrolled more than we we work with more than 320 young people all of them uh, coming to, to us, uh, working with us for several years and uh, particip having their own project or in partnership with us for taking part in, in our project. It's a lot of work uh, from our side, but in the same time, imagine 320 people uh, means thousands of work hours for the job park. And more than that means that we are present in 320 houses and imagine the families, the neighbors and so on and so on. So the job park message passed uh, in the community and was, uh, was a big shift in the perception of local people. In the beginning, the local people believed that we are dealing with dinosaurs because our job park was called before the Hatsa country dinosaur job. So people believed we are dealing with science and dinosaurs and so on. Then when the, the young people came to us, they, they understood that it's not only about, about dinosaurs, it's about their, uh, their territory, their life, uh, their traditions. And uh, like that, uh, they <clears throat> started to, to promote us and also to develop themselves. So this is the, the main idea, the, 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 the job art team, it's uh, working with local people, with young, young people on the benefit of the community. So uh, from our, our part, we empower them to use their willingness, ambition, uh, open mind, uh, hard working, and uh, to, to have to arrive, to have ideas, to, 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 to have projects with tasks, uh, develop activities and events, and all of them in the benefit of the community. So we empower them, but in the same time, they gave us uh, their energy, their creativity, and their options. So what's, what's, uh, was, and it is a great, um, a great exchange. So <clears throat> empowerment means to contact them, to motivate them, and to credit them. That means there are regular meetings, there are recommendations, they is themselves to organize. We are just uh, creating the frame, but it's themselves to organize and to, to uh, uh, come with their own projects. So the motivation for them is the, the Joe Park volunteers became a cool group. So we, year by year, we, we uh, arrived to have the smartest guy in the territory and to also uh, to offer them training opportunities, new experiences, and of course, at the end, to credit them. Uh, the, uh, the, um, the volunteers, they can have a volunteer pass and they can use and some of them used to get grants for universities or to develop projects or to uh, do their diploma thesis, master thesis. Some of them graduated now and they are coming back to train the new, um, the new ambassadors. So <clears throat> the volunteer program management, it's like that. It's based on the Romanian legislation. There is a contract, there are trainings. Also, there are call for activities. The, the young people are, are part, uh, they participate. We, uh, we are giving them a letter and volunteer pass. The volunteer pass, if they ask about, it's uh, like a certification with a number of hours, type of projects and skills they develop during their activities for most part of them work as for more than one year several for four, five years. So here you have posters uh, made by the volunteers. Uh, they are organizing every year um, or two times a year, 
uh, callings for new young people to join the volunteers and is them to organize. On the left side up is the this uh, the 20, 20, 2020 poster, which was in May. Then uh, they um, are working in different kinds of projects. They are very creative. Uh, they are helping us in uh, in developing uh, educational activities, uh, our events, but also in developing the tourism infrastructure. Also, they are partners in guiding, uh, especially for kids. They are guiding the kids or sometimes the tourists in our um, visiting centers uh, or during the different events we are organizing, like the Volcano Day uh, in August. Uh, also during the pandemic, uh, they played a very important role because they, they had two, two kinds of main activities. One was uh, to share with local people that the uh, uh, the, to share with, with them the idea that I am the job part two. So they um, um, represented themselves as, um, as voices of the job part and shared a lot of uh, impressions, uh, former activities, and also developed, like as you can see on the right side, uh, they um, took the Magyarosaurus Dacus, our, uh, let's say, symbol of dinosaur, symbol of the dinosaurs of Hatsai country, in all villages saying, here is the Joe Park 2. So it was them to organize this and to contact uh, local people, of course, in, in partnership with us. Um, so when the, the, <clears throat> the, the, the job Park Volunteers program arrived to, to one level, we realized that we need the, to, to go to the next step. And the next step was to develop the job Park Ambassador program. So we uh, uh, work with them to identify which are the main attributes uh, of an ambassador. And they established that the criteria of training, selection, and responsibilities. And there is a kind of uh, regulament, uh, a document they are signing, and uh, they um, assume the responsibility to, to be an ambassador. So the, let's say the ambassadors are the, the, the volunteers which are trained, and uh, they are assuming to represent not only the Joe Park, but the, the territory. So the special trainings are we organized since 2015 during the pandemic time it was not possible, but it was online. We had some online activities, as you can see, it's different uh, activities for the special, special training sessions dedicated to geodiversity, geopar values, communication, public speaking, personal development. It's very important for them. They have 15, 16, 17, 18, years old and they they have to 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 develop themselves to discover themselves so we are helping them to to discover themselves uh, one of the the first task for them was to contact other jobs from from ggn and to send the andy and to to this uh, job park so now andy and the and the and the joe the the, the ambassadors uh, are uh, trying to, to be in contact and to keep contact with different UNESCO Global Job Parks. Uh, we have exchanges with Hong Kong, origins, online exchanges. Uh, also, um, we have internships of volunteer, German volunteers from the Kulturweg program, UNESCO volunteers. So the, the volunteers who came to us work with our volunteers and ambassadors. Then our ambassadors, um, visited or, or, or organized exchanges with different other job parts. So on the top, on the right side, is the, the, the delegation of uh, Hatsik uh, country, UNESCO Global Job Park ambassadors in uh, Adamelo Brenta. Ten volunteers from, from our side been there. Also, an exchange with um, uh, Bakoni Balaton Job Park. Then this year was in, uh, an exchange with the Jertap UNESCO Global Geopark in Serbia, 
Uh, one team will go to um, uh, Moscow Arch Geopark. They've been there in 2018, 2019. Then this year, the summer camp in, in um, Moscow Arch will be organized again, and our volunteers will be there. Also, we had a youth exchange, a webinar with the Hong Kong, and uh, also a webinar with the Oki Island UNESCO Global Geo Park, and it was a great opportunity for them to, to have exchanges. So uh, they became a voice. As, uh, as you can see here on the left side, they, are, they, they were part of an international conference uh, of the Women, um, African Women Association, Geology, Women Geologists Association. Then in the middle, uh, they are uh, local uh, stars. They are, they are often invited to local TV or they are giving interviews to different TV channels or newspapers. So they are our voice, and it's very important because it's not only our voice, it's the voice <laughs> of, the, of their territory of the, and, uh, and uh, their own voice. Uh, there is also an organizational culture for the volunteers. Uh, you, on the left side, it's a kind of uh, social activity. We are organizing from time to time the different kinds of social activities, also celebrations. And one very interesting thing is, uh, as the, in the middle, you see a former colleague, Namarin, which uh, unfortunately passed away. And uh, he was like a father for the volunteers and ambassadors. And we decided last year to give the Namarin Joe Park Prize. And this uh, year, the, the winners, you can see on the right side, the winners um, use the prize to visit the Jerdap uh, UNESCO Global Geo Park in Serbia. So the young people, they, they have a great potential. A Geo Park, it's a long-term construction, so we need the young to be involved, not that, but not just to involve, to train them, to, to give confidence, to empower them, to, to be part of, the, our, of our approach in the Geo Park. They have energy and creativity, and they have a great impact in, in community, as I explained to you in the beginning. Now they are part of our management. They, let's say, if, I, if we capitalize the uh, work hours, we can see, we can say that we have more than five more colleagues working with us in the in the job park team. Also, the job park became part of their life. Uh, they are coming back, they are working uh, with us, they are promoting the job park in their uh, universities where they are in or in other places. So uh, finally, they became <clears throat> a model for other uh, territories in Romania and we hope in the global job park. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Alexandru Andrasanu. Thank you, dear Alex. Uh, was really impressive this the sharing of this experience, and uh, wow, uh, it's it's really uh, really an example of good practices what you developed in the um, since the beginning of this geopark in Hatek, uh, and this movement with volunteers is really really impressive. Thank you for sharing it uh, with us. It was very um, inspiring and impressive uh, presentation. Uh, we are already a little bit uh, far from uh, from the the time frame. Uh, however, I will open the floor for at least uh, one one question. If someone want to make a question to uh, Professor Alex. Well, it seems that people uh, will prefer to, to send you an email or uh, ask you uh, in the chat. Uh, I, I will uh, thank you once again, uh, because it was very important and was an honor to us uh, to, to count on you uh, on uh, this uh, uh, summer university. Thank you so much. Um, thank you.
Thank you so much, and thank you for your appreciations. Thank you, and uh, good luck. With, thank you. With, uh, and uh, due to, to the, the time uh, that we already overpassed the, the, the time, we will uh, not uh, organize the coffee break, and we will follow for the next uh, presentation that will be a uh, presentation by, uh, made by Silk Kram Eitrich, uh, Silk uh, is a biologist, uh, is a, a PhD uh, on, uh, in biology and soil sciences. Uh, she belongs to the scientific committee of Mixteca Alta UNESCO Global Geopark in Mexico. Uh, and uh, she carries research uh, on uh, environment e education uh, and also uh, wheat soils. Uh, one of the um, main, uh, one of the projects uh, that uh, Dr. Silk uh, Eidrich is involved in is as coordinator uh, of the project to the colors of the earth in the mixed tech alta. So she will talk uh, with us about education and heart towards geoconservation, the colors of the earth project. Thank you so much, uh, Silk, for. Uh, uh, accepting uh, our invitation uh, invitation is a uh, honor that you, you will uh, uh, with us in in this uh, intensive course and uh, from now the floor is yours Th thank you arthur it's a pleasure to be here today also i would like to be much better in one of the beautiful places we we are seeing in the in the presentations maybe next time <laughs> um, well and and yes i i thank you for this invitation to to give this this talk about the project of the colors of the earth that we right, developed right. as um as one of the uh, um, or as a tool to learn about the geological, edaphological, biological, cultural, and artistic heritage of the Mixteca Alta Geopark in Mexico. Many people have participated in this project, the scientific team, the communities of the nine municipalities that make up the geopark, the geopark guides, and several students of earth science, biology, um, art and, and design. Let me see if it is moving. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the background that led us to propose this project. I am a biologist, as you said before, specialized in soil science, and color has always been an important descriptor in the study of soils, and also is, it is used to classify them. The presence and quality of or organic matter is identified through the many shades of black and brown, and generally they are in the superficial horizons. When these horizons are buried, it indicates the presence of paleosols, uh, as we see the picture here at the, at the bottom. And in the ge geopark of Mixeca Alta, they can be seen in the sedimentary profiles near the rivers um, at several places. Also, iron minerals are, are red, orange, beige under oxidizing conditions and become bluish green, gray under reducing conditions. So the permeability of the soils can be identified, the proximity of the water table and so on. A lot of properties of soils can be described through the color. Soils tell, tell its history through color and is a property that is used in educational strategies in soil science in many places. Wait, wait a second here. <laughs> The color is identified with moon cell color charts and the soil colors can be perfectly marked on a piece of paper to remember the color that was described in the field. So we have several earth colors that can be used to create artwork and is a way to teach about the importance of soil around the world. Here I show some initiatives that inspired us from Brazil, Germany, Spain, 
the art of soil painting, malen mit der Erde, pintando con tierra, pintura con tinta de, 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 de solo. As you can see here at, in, the, in, the, in the pictures. Minerals ha, have always been used to paint. Just look at the cave paintings. There are many artists who are inspired by the sedimentary profiles to create art like Rainer Sieverding or um, the tailing tribe soil painters who use it to, to increase appreciation and respect for Mother Earth, which is ex exactly what we learned in the Mixteca Alta from the people who lived there. The respect for Mother Earth that we should have at every step we take. Also, there are uh, artists in Yanguitlan, like this one um, from Manuel Reyes, uh, who use colors of the earth for, for these sculptures. This, together with the fact that the Mixteca Alta Geopark is full of colors, and is one of the main features that allow us to recreate the sense of vision as in this spectacular erosive landscape of Las Conchas and the convent of Santo Domingo, Yanguitlan. Or at this geocide called La Paleta de Colores, where the mystery to be solved is the reason for the colors seen on this wall. Also, we can see through the colors the effect of geological processes such uh, as con contact metamorphism that change the orange color of the Janguitlan formation to, to purple colors like, like I am showing you here at the picture. This green color at this a sedimentary profile in an area of the geocide called Las Cucharas remains a mystery and it is not graffiti. The colors of the geological formation allow us to point them out in the distance. The orange at the bottom is the, is the Janwitlan formation, the white one, Toba Llano de Lobos, the dark gray on the top is the rock and the Sita Yukudak. Biodiversity, agrodiversity, las fiestas in Yanguitlan, or not only in Yanguitlan, in all the municipalities of the Mix Mixteca Alta Geopark, all is color every, everywhere. So in this way, the project of the colors of the earth was born with the aim of geoeducation, with a scientific interest to transmit through the colors of the earth, knowledge about earth science. Color is an attractive and comforting element of the landscape, and it is feasible to use it as a teaching strategy for earth science, since it reflects the geological, geomorphological, and pedological processes that have occurred in a certain place. Information was generated with the work of students, such as this one by Samantha, who collected samples and sites with contact metamorphism to explain the mineralogical and chemical changes of the clay of the Jan Lane formation in contact with the volcanic dikes that outcrop in several sites of the geopark. And so we developed information like, like this you are seeing on the, on the screen. In this other side, green colors are the result of hydrothermalism in which sediments or rocks undergo changes by volcanic fluids at high temperatures and chemical active, which causes a chemical and mineralogical transformation of the rock and its color. In fact, the color is so evident in some places 
that the inhabitants use it to name the sites, as is the case of this Rio Verde site. The colors of soils and paleosols, as I mentioned before, can be used to explain the formation processes of these profiles. This has been part of the scientific work, which gradually led us to have a collection of hundreds of samples from the geopark with a wide range of colors to which are added samples that the inhabitants of the region collected in their municipalities, showing us sites with color earths that we, that we have not seen before. For example, for example, the yellow, the yellow and pink of San Pedro Añane, the dark black of Tonaltepec. We have, we have them located on, on a map, but we, are, we also have all the samples. And so we, we make um, a map like this, where people can see all the colors that that can be seen in the, in the geopark. To share this uh, scientific information and generate playful tools that could be useful for people of different ages, we design a kit to paint with the colors of the earth. We have uh, developed a manual para pintar con los colores de la tierra, where we explain how to do these colors in this booklet. Um, this activity turned out to be a hit. People of all ages like it very much. And the same time, uh, at the same time that they have fun, we explain to them about the geodiversity in the geopark. Here, here we can see all the steps, uh, looking for colors, sample them, uh, dry the, the samples, uh, grind them, um, sieve them, and then we, we mix it with, with some, um, how to say it in English, an, an agglutinant. Uh, it can be water or, or egg or... Um, um, baba de nopal. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to say it in English. Many workshops have been done with children, students, adults, architects, teachers, artists. It is very a very successful, like I said, um, and and they can learn something uh, about uh, the geopark with fun. Here's some, here's some pictures uh, about the masterpieces uh, they, they developed. Um, uh, and other pictures of, of these uh, workshops and the, and the masterpieces only with, only all of them only made with earth colors. Um, Painting with, with colors, colors led to many other activities. This was a contest, Pintando el Geoparque Mixteca Alta for children, in, in which we discovered that the children of the Geopark know a lot about the, ter the, the territory. And so we also learn from them. This is a memorama. The pairs are formed with a picture of an element. These are the, the pictures from the from um, many sides of the geopark. But the pair, uh, the, mm, the pairs are made by a picture, and the on the other one is a geomet a, a geometric a graphic illustration of the picture as, as you he, he, see, see here the fungus with the fungus uh, um, 
Cerro, Cerro Verde with Cerro Verde. Uh, this one is, um, uh, are people from the Mixteca Alta working on a very typical way uh, to, to plant maize. And here is the graphic representation, the maize uh, very colorful with the graphic representation, uh, um, a rock with a sphero, um, intemperismo esferoidal uh, with the graphic representation and, and so on. To help, it's, it's difficult, I must say it. We, we played some years, some days ago, and, and we, we need to be very concentrated to, to, to have some pairs. Um, but to help those who play this, this game and at the same time to learn, a book was elaborated that gives uh, information about the geosites, um, as you can see in, in, in this picture I, I take from, from the memorama. Just yesterday, we received the memoramas from the publisher. So if you want, you can uh, do your orders uh, now. We have hundreds of these memoramas to, yeah, to sell of the, or, to, or to give to the, to the people. Um, the, the idea is to continue developing activities to appreciate the landscape with all the senses. It is an organoleptic learning, listening, tasting, observing, smelling, touching, practically puts body, mind, and soul to achieve geoconservation in the Mixteca Alta Geopark. And so I am uh, finishing and Muchas gracias por su atención. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much. Uh, muchísimas gracias, Silke, uh, for this presentation that uh, was really inspiring. Also a very good example how it is possible to associate art and um, geosciences and, uh, and the, the, the geology. Uh, and it's, an, it's this natural way. So this is, is when we talk about uh, the reconnection uh, in between uh, man and the planet, the mankind and the planet, uh, this is really one of very good example uh, about it. Uh, thank you, thank you so much for this so beautiful uh, presentation. Um, I think that, uh, uh, <clears throat> You have already uh, a lot of people congratulating you uh, in the chat. Uh, I will uh, open the uh, I will open the floor for someone that want to make uh, a question to to Silk. If you want, someone. One of our projects uh, we want to, to make in the, in the next months, years, is to co collect samples from all over the geoparks to make an edafoteca. Maybe wow. we can this, down all the, all the geoparks. This is the really, park. really impressed. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's going right to the, the point that tomorrow I will talk in my... Uh, uh, my keynote uh, during uh, during the afternoon uh, because it's the networking, the importance and the opportunities to uh, to do networking, and this is a very good example that could improve a lot. And uh, it's not only um, art; is uh, about science, it's about education, it's about culture. In the end, it's about uh, UNESCO, and this could be really uh, impressive so for sure many many of those that are here connected uh, are uh, for sure they are interested uh, to cooperate on this 
So thank you so much. Uh, once again, thank you for the acceptation of the, our invitation. Uh, and now it's time to go to the, the next uh, presentation uh, that will be done by Fabiano Souza. Uh, uh, he is the responsible for uh, the geoeducational programs in the Caminhos dos Canyons do Sul, the Pass of the South Canyons, uh, UNESCO Global Geopark in the in Brazil, in South of Brazil, is a, a kind of transborder. Uh, UNESCO Global Geopark in between uh, the state of uh, Rio Grande do Sul and uh, Santa Catarina. And uh, Fabiano, uh, that have already uh, good uh, experience uh, working uh, on this, uh, and it's a very, very nice territory that uh, we have mountain, uh, we have coastal area, and uh, yes, uh, the, the geopark achieved the, the, sea, the ocean. So from the mountains to the sea, the challenges of climate change in Caminhos de Scanners do Sul, UNESCO Global Geoparks. Fabiano Souza, thank you so much for accepting uh, our invitation. And from now, the floor is yours. Well, <laughs> it seems that uh, for some reason, I, I saw him a uh, few minutes ago, but uh, uh, he's not here. Uh, well, let's go uh, to the next uh, presentation. Um, I think that uh, Professor Thais Guimarães is here. Yes, I'm seeing her. So, uh, we will go to the, the next uh, presentation uh, that will be uh, the responsibility of uh, Professor uh, Thais Guimarães. Uh, she is professor at the Pernambuco University in Brazil, uh, is a specialist in geocommunication. Um, she man managed some uh, famous platforms uh, of uh, geocommunications like the geo, uh, geo destinos, so geo destinations uh, that uh, she developed together with uh, her students uh, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, uh, lockdown. Um, more, more recently, uh, or since long time, in fact, uh, she developed uh, research in geoeducation and geotourism, especially in the coastal area of the Pernambuco state in the no northeastern of Brazil, uh, and in the, also in the San Francisco River Valley in the interior of the Pernambuco state in Brazil. Dear Professor Thais Guimarães, it's a pleasure that uh, you are with us um, and uh, today, uh, this time, uh, to talk um, about uh, the south coast of Pernambuco and the geoeducation. So sharing with, uh, with us many of your uh, research work uh, that you carried on during uh, your PhD. So thank you for accepting uh, our invitation. And from now, the, the floor is yours. So please. You need to switch on your microphone. Uh, yes. Sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Professor Arthur. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you, Professor Arthur Sá, Emaline Rosado, Elizabeth Silva, for the invitation. Uh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to participate once again in the Summer University. <laughs> I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy. Uh, so, today I'm going to present to you some of the geoheritage né, of the south coast of Pernambuco and some of uh, our geoeducation. Uh, well, uh, one minute. Uh, that's okay now. Uh, only to uh, need to enlarge. 
like to make the presentation? Uh, so. Uh, em baixo, em baixo, onde você liga ao, ao projetor, quando yeah. é para projetar. Como se fosse fazer a apresentação. Sim. Não, em, em, ba em baixo, na base. Tem o ícone okay. para, para a projeção. Ok. Sim. Screen. Share. Ah, sorry. Está tudo bem. Nós já estamos a ver. Só tem que pôr ah. isso em maior. Ok. That's ok? Uh, no. It's, no? Everything is black. Uh, What's happened? Okay, um, no? No. Repare, em baixo, quando você, na base, quando você quer yeah. passar para o projetor, é aí que você carrega. Sim. Se aparece uma coisa, se aparece os quadrinhos todos e você não vê, carrega em encerrar. Você Sim. Carrega. Não, não carrega em encerrar nada. Vou fechar. Não, 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 não fecha. Fechei? Uh, um minuto. Ah, o que está acontecendo? Vou a assim. Ok. Ok. Share. It's ok, no? Não. Uh, não tem problema. Faça a apresentação assim, com, com o seu PowerPoint. Tá. Ah. Dá para ver? Dá ah, para ver tudo. Não, não, sei o que não, sim, sim, não, ficou tudo preto. Deixa eu ver. Não. E agora? Nada? Agora voltou a ficar igual. Como, ah. como se você estivesse a editar o PowerPoint. Sorry, sorry. Um... Quer que, que a gente faça a partir daqui? Não. É, dá para ver assim, tá ok? Ou prefere? Dá, igual. Eu tenho aqui o PowerPoint, posso fazer a partir daqui. Hum, sei o que é está acontecendo aqui. That's ok. okay. Uh, tá bem sim? Tá bom, tá bom. Tá. Sorry, sorry. Uh, well... <laughs> Uh, so cost, South Coast of Pernambuco and their education. Well, uh, the location of the South Coast of Pernambuco, uh, emphasis of the Cape Santo Agostinho promotor. The area that covers the South Coast of the state Pernambuco is located between the city of Cabo de Santo Agostinho and and the city of São José da Coroa Grande, adding up to seven coastal cities. But today I will talk about our activities developed in the jail site of the Cape Promotory. Okay, uh, this is the Cape Promotory. It is formed by Granite Rock, Kelly de Granito do Cabo, the rocks, date from about 102 million years. And uh, geodiversity aspects. The south coast of Pernambuco has relevant geodiversity, resulting from geodynamics process over millions of years at the end of the Cretaceous, which are linked to the complex fragmentation of the Gondwana mega continent and the consequent opening of the South Atlantic Ocean. These processes made post possible the current geomorphological configurations of the Pernambuco coast, which has scientific and education importance. At the same time that uh, it stands out aesthetically from other coastal areas of the state. The South Coast is an international touristic destination. 
historical importance. Uh, so on the cave promotor, this is a village, kind of village in Nazaré. The lands in the Cabo de Santo Agustinho and Villa de Nazaré region were occupied in the 16th century by the Caetés Indians who lived uh, in villages located in the forest of the region. The beginning of the colonization of Cabo Santo Agustinho dates from 1553 in the village of Nazaré become a strategic point in the defense of the territory during the Dutch invasion. The Luso Brazilians defended the Pernambuco coast with the support forts, batteries, and barracks located at strategic points. Uh, he, here is a part of the village, right? where is the possible to see the church of Nazaré, was fit with uh, the 16th century. Still on the historical importance, we have here some of the histories, his, historical ruins that were built by the Luz Brazilians. Uh, so the, the ruins of the lighthouse keeper's house, ruins for the castle of the sea, ruins of the, of the old barracks, and archaeological importance. In addition to the ruins, still studying of the outskirts of the village erosion process often show records of this past with archaeological artifacts and other historical elements being frequently found. Among these artifacts, it is possible to observe crockery, coins, nails, padlocks, Kings, musket projectiles, and even cannon from the 17th century. Geoturistic importance. The privileged geographical location allows you to enjoy the sun during our year. The scenario led to development of the sun and beach touristic activity. The activity has a great contribution to the economic development of the region. Some the Cape Promotorio and Cabo and Gaibu Beach, Caletas Beach, the Cape Promotorio, the here, and Blackstone Beach are attractive tourists. Uh, some geotouristic activities and geoproducts. Uh, the tourists can buy handmade liqueur, cachaça, sweets, papers, uh, clay products. Uh, this is a muddy buff gel site. The gel site is an open sky laboratory. We can work with geology, influence of geodiversity in biodiversity, tourism, history and archaeology appreciation of local culture, sustainable economic development, and geoeducation activities. Geoeducation. We can highlight the work of the geoeducation as a process that presents a new format to science, aiming at the most diverse target audience. For example, in pictures one, lecture for children, and pictures two, educational games with the elderly. Understand geoeducation. We can understand geoeducation as a geoconservation strategy, understood a specific area of environmental education to the applied in geoconservation and which is developed in formal and or no formal space of education. How and where to do educate? We can learn in museums and interpretation centers, for example, at the UNA Museum on the south coast of Pernambuco. Via lectures, uh, this is the UNA Museum located in the Fisherman Village. Vazia do Una, São José da Coroa Grande, South Coast, Pernambuco. Uh, also games, 
guided and self-guided tools, booklets, folders. Um, here are some craft games with the team of biodiversity on the South Coast Pernambuco. And here are the games being applied with UFPE geology students. Here we, here, we, here we have an example of informative material about the south coast of Pernambuco, containing maps, photos, informative texts, and in easy language for the general public. Um, how and where to do educate? as well as documentaries, panels, live lives, podcasts, formal and non-formal space of different strategies. Field class and the Granite do Cabo Geosite, a non-formal space. Here are some panels on the south coast of Pernambuco. This is an example of panel containing the main trials and geoscientific points of interest on the Cape Promotor. We observe that geoeducation, geocommunication, and tourism are deeply connected. Here, uh, it is important to highlight the relationship between geoeducation and geocommunication and the relevant work to communication through geoeducation in formal and non-formal spaces. This is a panel with information about the volcanic rocks of Ipojuca in the, municip in the municipality of the south coast of Pernambuco. This, this was an extension project with Professor Gorky Mariano of some education activities in the Cape Promotory. Some field classes, uh, students in contact with soils and sediments, uh, Cape Granite Outcropper, Cape Granite Outcropper, trials, uh, rheolithic volcanic rock, And uh, these are some experience in geoeducation in formal space with graduate students in geography at UPE Petrolina. Geoeducation games workshop at the university with graduate students. Ex experience with geoeducation and geocommunication formal space. This was uh, our university extension project with basic education. Uh, here, exposure of minerals and the rocks with children. Memory game, memory game with a geological and environment team. And uh, this is an environment board game example with the name of geoeducation in your hands. This board game, imagined by us, uh, our Hegecos study group, it was made, uh, it was made in small, small and larger size. Here are some moments for our challenge in the time of pandemic. Right? This was our remote project, Kelly, geoeducation in your hands. We had an audience of 121 children. Here uh, are some of our works on the south coast of Pernambuco. These articles, uh, beach rocks of southern coast zone and geoeducation games. This is a new publication, a chapter with maps and photos, uh, which talked about the importance of the stone heritage uh, on the south coast of Pernambuco, published last year in the book Patrimonio in Pedra. Well, uh, what can we see? 
first, the importance of this area for the history of the eighth is notorious. Where we highlight the separation of the African and South American continents at the opening of the South Atlantic Ocean. In addition to the natural elements, it is an area of great geological, historical, archaeological, tourist, and cultural importance. This is way we see the need for geoconservation strategies through tourism, geocommunication, and geoeducation. So in this sense, geoeducation can enable use of alternative teaching strategies applied in non formal spaces, the promotion and valorization of tangible and intangible heritage, popularization of geoscience in the world territory, insertion of individuals into society, and the search for more balanced planet with quality of life. Thank you for attention. Uh, these are our social networks. Okay, thank you, Professor Thais Guimarães. Thank you for your uh, presentation. Uh, very nice work. It's a different approach. Uh, it's not in a geopark. It's a place with a very interesting, it's very famous. The, the south coast of Pernambuco is very famous for the beautiful uh, sand beaches that uh, along the coast, very touristic. Uh, and uh, your work already uh, demonstrated that uh, the, the the territory have a potential that is much more than uh, the um, <clears throat> the potential for the uh, uh, sun and beach uh, tourism and uh, demonstrates that the geo tourism uh, it is uh, it's possible to be developed there and more most important the geo education uh, there are already a lot of people uh, congratulating you uh, in the chat but there are a question from uh, uh, Mr. Wang Tao from Lushan UNESCO Global Geopark in China. Uh, he said that his question is, uh, is, is there any challenge to the education and the geotourism in the, in the region? Se há algum desafio para o geotourismo e a geoeducação no território? Muitos. Amen. É, o território, ele... Vou falar em português, você me ajuda? I, will tra I translate, I translate. Ok, thank you. Uh, o território é, tem um turismo caracterizado por sol e praia. Então, a ideia é associar os elementos da geodiversidade a este turismo. E, para isso, necessita... É, interação com a comunidade, capacitação dos profissionais, dos guias, é, incentivo e políticas públicas. Então, acho acredito que esse seja o grande desafio. Os dois principais, políticas públicas voltadas para este turismo, já que a área é uma, uma região já consolidada no turismo de sol e praia. Então, acrescentar essas estratégias de geoeducação e de geoturismo é, tem essa certa dificuldade devido já a essa Vai ser certa difícil resistência. introduzir tudo isso. Resolve. <risos> sorry, sorry, sorry. Stop. Sorry, sorry. Ok. Uh... Mas, é, teoricamente, é a falta Não, de... Não, espera, deixa-me traduzir, deixa traduzir e depois com, completa. <risos> ok, uh, sorry. Uh... So, uh, Professor Thais Guimarães said that uh, the sh there are a lot uh, of challenges related with the geotourism and the geoeducation. Uh, due to the fact that the, the region is uh, well known and very famous for the sun and beach uh, tourism, uh, the idea is to associate also the, uh, the geodiversity uh, elements of the territory to this tourism. Uh, trying to uh, create interactions uh, with the community, uh, also 
in the uh, education and uh, mo most important probably uh, in, um, creating awareness for the, the change in the public policies. Um, so uh, creating awareness uh, with the, the, um, the policy makers for the importance of the geotourism. So uh, this is uh, um, a way to, to um, add uh, to these strategies uh, a new, new input uh, in order to people uh, realize the importance uh, of the, the geotourism and also the geoeducation. And now you have thank more? You. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> okay, I don't know if there are uh, some more uh, questions. Oh, um, you have uh, Tarek Ben Fry from Tunisia. Uh, he congratulates you and uh, he said that if you uh, please, uh, if you would pl uh, please give us links of articles, or if you can share the PDFs of the articles. Yes. So the, the articles that you uh, show, uh, uh, if you can put uh, the links in the in the chat uh, today or tomorrow. Uh, okay. Okay. Posso so, colocar meu e-mail também. Uh, and also, uh, yes, you can put your email and people can write you and you uh, after answer to the to the email sharing sharing the, the, the copies of the paper. So you have already the uh, the email of Professor Thais Guimarães and uh, you can uh, write to her and she uh, she share the the papers uh, with you. Well. Uh, we uh, achieved the end of the second day uh, of the sixth edition of the International Summer University. It was a long day, but it was a very nice uh, journey. Uh, I will ask to all of you to switch on your uh, video camera uh, to take the, the picture uh, of, of the day. Um, and. Uh, uh, I would like to thank to all of you that uh, um, were a kind of resistance uh, that during this long journey, uh, many of you are already, those that are in uh, Asia countries uh, are already in the, in the day after or almost in the day after. Uh, I thank you all especially uh, for that, but also to those that in Latin America, in Argentina and in, in Mexico, for example, that linked uh, very early uh, from, uh, from Mexico at 5 a.m. It was great and uh, resisted until now. Um, thank you. Thank you so much to the keynote speakers. Uh, your contribution was fundamental for the success of this journey and tomorrow will be the, the last but not the least uh, day of this intensive course. We have a lot of uh, others uh, interesting um, keynotes to share with all, all of you. Uh, thank you, thank you so much uh, for uh, attending uh, uh, the course uh, and uh, see you tomorrow, um, see you all uh, tomorrow. So. Bye-bye, and tomorrow, all together again. Thank you, thank you all. Thank you, Arthur, see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Un beso, <laughs> un beso desde la Huasteca. <laughs> From Huasteca, Irma. Chao. Hola, nena. Hello, hello. Chao, bye. Un saludo desde Bolivia. Saludos, saludos. Thank you, Arthur. Muchas gracias. gracias. Saludos desde México. Thank you, Kimia. Thank you. Gracias, Arthur, desde Suiza, Colombia. <laughs> gracias, Adiela. Sí, Muchas chao. Gracias. Hasta mañana. Hasta, Hasta mañana. mañana, Arthur. Un gusto con vosotros. Un gusto todos. para mí también. Chao. 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 Thank, you Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias, Walter. From Argentina, un abrazo. Chao. Chao. Yeah. See you tomorrow, Pacapón. Okay. okay.